your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. James Gardner, one tackle, a 6'5", 290 pound senior. At the other tackle, Josh Kirkland, a 6'2", 270 pound senior. We've got Jason Wright at one wide out. We'll have a lot of wide outs out there. Jason Wright, Adrian Fulmer, along with John Mathis. Tight end will be Ryan Odom. Odom also lines up in the fullback spot, along with Jeremy Odom, Barry Elliott. Elliott, just over 300 yards rushing in his first two contests. He's averaging right at about uh, a little over, uh, I would venture to say, six yards every time he touches the ball. And the 4-4 defense Auburn comes in with, that's really what I used to like to call a Chinese fire drill, all the many stunts, but it does just leave three people back there to cover for the pass. So don't be surprised to see Hughes and company come out, try to get up with Wright and Brackens, spread them out a little bit, and then be able to run the ball. And that's going to be very interesting because you, because you have Jason Wright, Adrian Fulmer, Jonathan Mathis, uh, Larry Brackens, 6'2", 6'2", 6'2", and 6'5", respectively. And I take a look at the defensive backs. They've got 5'8", 5'9", 5'9", and 5'7". So uh, you definitely have some uh, height advantage there for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. I was looking at it this afternoon. I was getting ready for the ball game. I look at 4'4", type defense. You're right. They're, we look for them to uh, run it a little bit more, uh, pass a little bit more than they have. Tay Sheely, he's going to be an interesting to watch. He's probably their outstanding lineman. He's a big guy, 6'2", 275 pounds. He goes both ways. So when I was writing it down, I say, hey, this guy's 6'2", 275. And he goes both ways. He's got to be good. We're going to take this 10-second timeout for station identification. Okay, getting ready to kick off for the Auburn Tigers. They kick it over and over and it's going to be received by Larry Brackens. Brackens inside the five yard line. He gets it across the 15, across the 20, across the 25, down to the 30, 35, the 40, the 35, and he is knocked down. Yes. Okay, okay. A very fine run back. Larry Brackens gets it from the 5 to the 46 yard line. That's a run back of 41 yards for the Dolphin Eye Tigers, putting them in fine offensive position. You got Stephen Hughes at quarterback, first and 10 for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Got Odom in the backfield, who's blocking for Barry Elliott, the tie tailback. They're outside, hash mark to the left side. We go left and right. Going in motion is Odom. Here's a fake, and we got a uh, flag right away. Along the line of scrimmage. Look like uh, right tackle over there. That's Kirkland, number 77. Moving around a little bit, even though he was not down in the three-point stance, he was not motionless a second before the snap of the ball. And so Dolphin comes out, and it's very interesting. Auburn's putting them all six, maybe seven yards as the deepest man from the line. They're going to make them block them up front, Gil. Okay, and of course, we saw Ryan Odom going in motion. There's a legal procedure call in motion call against the Dolphin Eye Tigers. First five-yarder walked off, first penalty of the ball game. Now let's make it a first and 15 for the Dolphin Eye Tigers, just at their own 41-yard line. Double wideouts to the wide side of the field, the right side of the field. Stephen Hughes straightens up. He drops back. He's going to be dropped to the line of scrimmage. He lost a yard on the play, and good, good pressure coming in on the play for the uh, Auburn Tigers. Number 50, Derek Jackson. Jackson, a senior 5'11", 240 pounder, putting the squeeze on Hughes. Well, instead of just the four down linemen, they bring in the linebackers to the line of scrimmage, putting them down, and here they come. Wright was on a deep post pattern, was open, but Hughes just didn't have time to get the ball to him. That dropped a back to just inside the 40 yard line. The Dolphin Line Tigers have to go to the 43, 44 yard line of the uh, Auburn Tigers for a first down, second down situation. We got double wideouts. Larry Brackens will be slotted inside. Jason Wright on the far side of the field, on the near side. Let's go with uh, Jonathan Mathis out of the I formation. 
Sending Brackens in motion, going from right to left, across it, across the field. Stephen Hughes drops back. He's got good protection. He lays it up there. Look out, running under it is Brackens. Let's see if Brackens stepped out of bounds. He made the reception at the 33-yard line. Very close to being out of bounds when he made the catch. But that time, it was uh, Stephen Hughes really lofted to get over the defenders, and it was a real nice pass by Stephen Hughes. Just a good touch. You know, throwing in a little bit of breeze. Larry Brackens just came in motion from right to left, got to the sidelines, turned it up, hung it up there. One foot in bounds, high school is all he's got to have. And again, we couldn't see because of the open line on the sidelines whether he did get him in there or not. But the officials it. called it down, first and 10, though. That was good for a 28-yard pickup, first and 10. Oldham going in motion to the right side. Here's a pitch. I'm going to Barry Elliott. Elliott cuts back against his left, gets inside, right down to the line of scrimmage. That is it. So Stephen Hughes completes his first pass, good for 28 yards to uh, Larry Brackens. Uh, Barry Elliott carrying for the first time tonight. He get, he lost a yard on the play. That's going to be second and 11. Just good angles there by the... Auburn Tiger defense as they came across wouldn't let Elliott to the outside and when he cut back the linebacker Rod Marshall's there one of the first ones in on the hit loss of one. Elliott has carried the ball 52 times for 308 yards that's averaging just over six yards a carry for the Dolphin Nine Tigers. He was the quarterback on a second and 11 situation inside the Auburn Tiger 35 yard line he snaps the pass is incomplete and goes behind the intended receiver that time Jason Wright was the intended receiver he had to fall back and try and get back to it however it falls incomplete that'll bring up a third down situation just a little bit behind again Wright coming in on the quick slant a post pattern went back got his hands on the ball almost made a spectacular catch on the play Peter Stanley coming into the ball game for the Dolphin Nine Tigers. He comes in with the play as they're looking at a situation. They go from right to left, starting it off on the first offensive series for the Dolphin Nine Tigers. Jason Wright and Larry Brankins will go to the far side of the field, the narrow side, to the uh, wide side, the left side of the field, out of the I formation. The dropping back is Hughes. Hughes is looking to his left. He got a one-on-one. -on -one. He slaps, drops it off to Barry Elliott. Elliott gets inside the 30, down to the 29-yard line. He'll be pushed back after about a seven or eight-yard pickup. And uh, that time, uh, just a little bit of a screen. They had everybody going deep, left Barry Elliott in the backfield, and just uh, sloughed it off to Barry. Barry got about eight yards on the play. And we've got a Dolphin Tiger down on the field. And that was good for two, about the 29-yard uh, line. So that was an eight-yard pickup for Barry Elliott. So uh, it was uh, Stephen Hughes who passed very little last week. He was two for seven in the passing department, 27 yards. He's already exceeded that, where he is two for three tonight so far for about 36 yards. And the big thing about the play on that gets the Dothan Tigers to where they do have a chance if they wish to try to kick it. Barry Elliott, number eight, is the one they're having to help off the field. Elliott favoring his ankle as he is coming off the field for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. He's being helped off by a couple of the coaches on a fourth down situation. Fourth and uh, let's make it fourth and about eight situation. Fourth and seven situation for the Dolphin Eye Tigers at the 9.56 mark. First offensive series for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Also in for Dolphin. Let's pick up Charles Walker over here on the uh, left side. And uh, they, of course, will try a, a field goal by B.J. Hall. B.J. Hall will attempt a 36-yarder. 36-yarder, hash mark to the left side, to the near side of the field. The right-footed kicker. There's the snap. There's the placement of the ball. He gets it up. It looks like it might be a little bit short. It's way off to the right, and it is short. So the 46-yarder uh, yard, fails by... The Dolphin High Tigers and with uh, 9.37 showing on the clock, we're going to turn it over to the Auburn Tigers. Just didn't hit that clean and really had a little high snap. Dennis Jury, number 15, doing a good job to get it down. But anything that throws off your timing on the extra point or the field goal attempt causes it to fall to the ground short. First and 10, Auburn coming out. Auburn coming out. Let's see what they come out with. They run out of a wing tee formation. Zach Spiller is a junior quarterback. He has more and wear in the backfield along with Tay Allen. They split him wing to the left side, a wing T formation, handoff to the second back through. That would be uh, Moore, and he is pushed back the line of scrimmage. He is long, loses about five yards on the play. They mark it back to about the 17-yard uh, line, so that was really only a two-yard loss, three-yard loss. So that's going to be a second down and about 12 situation. Well, the play started, and again, wing T, you're trying to isolate a particular area. That time, coming across the line of scrimmage, Herschel Bay hits him in the backfield and has plenty of help putting him down, loss of three on the play. Double wideouts coming out to the uh, right side, far side. You've got Levitt. Wing T to the left. This time Spillers is looking. The pass is incomplete. 
and he had two men in the open over there, and he got right between both of them. Didn't hit either one. Couldn't tell which one he was really passing to. There might have been a little bit of confusion on the play. I'm looking there, and looking like the left tackle was the one that was down in the, down the field too. Gill uh, going out for the pass, but they had him open on the sidelines. <laughs> Nonetheless, if it wasn't at 61, it was number 81. That brings up a third down situation. Third and about 12. That might have been the 80. Well, it might it have been the 61. I'm sitting there. I've watched him back to the hook. Double wide outs now. They send the man in motion this time again. Hand off to the first back through. Getting yards across the 30, 35, down to the 40, down to the 45. Finally pulled down from behind. And a big, big run for the Auburn Tigers that time. Tyrone Ware. Ware gets the ball all the way out to the 45-yard uh, line. And the Auburn Tigers good for a first down. And when he popped the line of scrimmage, Ken McIntyre, the last one on the field for the Auburn Tigers, had to make the stop. He brings it down, but a huge gain on the play for Auburn. That was Tyrone Ware, the uh, 11th grader, 5'9", 170 pounder, coming wide out to the right side is Travis Elston, wing T to the right side, out of first and 10 situation from their own 46-yard line. Again, handoff is going to Ware. Ware gets across the 46, down to the 50, down to the 49. He gets into Dalton territory. Tyrone Ware again, the ball carrier, gets it inside the Dolphin. It's on the, uh, well, just a ball length inside the Dolphin 50-yard line. And you've got to like the first couple of carries for Ware, getting the ball and turning it up the football field, Gill, and keeping those legs churning. Looked like he could have been stopped for just a short game, but then he's going to get the better part of five yards with that second effort. Coming into the ball game is Patrick Levitt. Levitt will line up at the tie wide out, going far out to the uh, left side. Also there on the uh, left side, they lose a lot of receivers. I Allen over there on a uh, second down, second in the bottom five situation for the Auburn Tigers. Fillers this time. The ball is tipped and is almost picked up. A good hustle by Tyrone Ware, but he was unable to come up with it. He tipped the ball for the Dolphin High Tigers. Looks that like Branch? Branch, Kevin Branch got his hands up. We've seen Mathis pick one of those off yeah. and get the sudden change and get the big return, but Branch got those hands up and still going out there after it looked like Auburn had a player number seven in the vicinity when they came down. Tyrone Ware. Ware. Ware kept hustling after it. He didn't give up on it. He kept going after it and almost ran it down after uh, Branch. I'm looking for Branch to go, to uh, get one of those tips of his own and just run all the way into the end zone. Score, <laughs> defense, score. <laughs> Not a third and five situation for the Auburn Tigers on the Dolphin side of midfield, setting a man over here. Double wing formation now. Spillers didn't like what he saw. He's going to call timeout. So at the 747 mark of the first period, no score in the ballgame, we're going to break for this 30-second timeout. We have double tight end formation, wing team to the right side. Sending the man in most of this time. And off again to Ware. Ware, quick open off the right, uh, between the right guard and right tackle. He gets down to the 45 yard line. He's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Just coming around, giving a little bit of misdirection that time. Gill sending the man in motion from the short side of the field. And Dolphin reacted well, but again, made enough yardage on the play. They could be going for the first down here on fourth. It's going to be fourth and about one. Spillers is coming in with the play. Let's send uh, Tay, uh, Tay Allen going out to the left side along with Elston in the backfield. You got Sean Bailey going in motion is where this time the handoff going to Bailey. Bailey's got the first down. He's going to be very, very close. Sean Bailey for his first carry of the night gets it to the Dolphin 39 yard or 44 yard line. It's going to be very close to a first down. And it is a first down. Second first down of the drive for the Auburn Tigers at the seven minute mark here of the first period of no score. Just a good play right there, just trying to catch Dothan a quick count. Didn't need much, didn't get much skill, but again, first and ten. They're on the drive, moving the football. Up front, you got Gabe Davis, Ramon Johnson, Brad Addison, along with Kelvin Branch for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Bailey Briggs and Tyler back black are the uh, middle linebackers. You got a first and ten from the Dolphin 44 yard line for Spillers, his junior quarterback. Hands off this time again to Ware. Ware finding running room on the right side. Tries to turn the corner. He's pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line and rotting him out of bounds. And we'll give him points on that one. Good ride by the Dolphin Eye Tigers defensive back that time. Coming around, that was Kenny McIntyre coming out of the defensive backfield to make the stop from behind on Ware. And again, good ball handling. The Auburn offensive backfield getting the ball to the sideline of where going to be the workhorse it looks like tonight. It's got uh, along with Kenny McIntyre, Dennis Fury, Jonathan Mathis, and Larry Franklin's in the defensive backfield. Both the Dolphin High Tigers, double wing formation now. You got Bailey, blown back, and handoff going to Bailey. Bailey puts his head down. He's met right at the uh, line of scrimmage. I believe that might have been Tyler Black meeting him, uh, maybe along with, uh, who met him? Uh, who met him right there? Also, Dennis Fury. Met him, Tyler Black, Dennis Fury, straighten up Sean Bailey. Bailey, really no, not much of a gain on the play. Well, that's when it ha happens when you get your people to the football, you get the hit, 
three Dothan Tigers in, leaves them in a third and long situation now. Okay, 6.05 in the clock moving, time of the first period, and speaking of moving, the Auburn Tigers moving from their own 20 down to the Dolphin 40s where they stand now on a third down situation. Third and six, the clock moving. It's been, for the most part, a ground game. Hand off to Ware. Ware gets away from one tackler. Now he has stopped behind and they finally pull him down, slowing him down that time. It's Kenny McIntyre. McIntyre slows him down. We got the... Uh, Timeout. We got an official timeout. So, slow down in a punting situation. We come back. We've got 547 left in the first quarter. No score in the ballgame. We'll be back after this 60 second timeout. line in Salina scrimmage. Spillers will be doing the punting back to receive will be the deep man Jonathan Mathis. Mathis stands about his own 20 yard line. Not much of a rush put on his head. A high high kick it gets away from. Look out it's going to go dead. It's going to get out of bounds. It's going to go into the oh boy that was close. It went into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback coming out of the 20. You, uh, Mike it almost died right about the one or two yard line and I thought I really thought they were going to get to it before it went into the end zone. They did have a chance at it Gil and about the only thing they could have done is possibly slap, slap the ball away from the field of play or back Backwards to get it down there. Just an excellent punt, kicking it to the inside right pylon there. You know, just one too many hops for the Dolphin Tigers. Really, it was their momentum that carried it into the end zone. Like to say, if they had come from behind and slapped it out, it would have been down around the uh, two yard line. Right now, we have first and 10 from our own 20 yard line. Double line outs going out to the wide side, the right side of the field. Hand off to Barry Elliott. Elliott up the middle. Gets across the 20, across the line of scrimmage, 21 22. Let's mark it about the 23 yard line. Gain of three for. Rob into the ball game for the Dolphin Nine Tigers. Just straight lead them up football, put a helmet on a helmet, turn and give the ball to Rab, who picks up the better part of four yards. We got a Rab here, is that Tim Rab? Tim uh, Rab. Okay, Rab, Tim Rab. Uh, he's in for the Dolphin Nine Tigers, in for Barry Elliott, Stephen Hughes, the senior quarterback, breaks the huddle. Double wide outs going out to the right side, that's Adrian Fulmer, along with Jason Wright. Rab, along with Riley, uh, Ryan Odom, in the backfield on a second and seventh situation for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Just out of the shadow, they're on 20 yard line. Hand off again, look at Rab. Rab finds a little bit of running room, gets to the 25 yard line. That's where his uh, forward progress is stopped. So that's going to bring up a third down situation. Third and five, and Larry Brackens, along with uh, Jonathan Mathis, coming into the ball game. Rab with a lead play, hesitated just a little bit as he saw the hole, and before he could make a cut, the Auburn Tigers collapsed on him and put him down. Third down and still five for the Dolphin Tigers. We saw that little hesitancy. That's the difference between Rab, who has not carried the ball that much, and, of course, Gary Elliott, who has carried the ball, of course, over uh, 50 times thus far this year. They work uh, out of the shotgun for the first time tonight on the third and five situation. Double line outs to the right side, single to the left. Here comes Larry Brackens. Brackens on the flat. He slips momentarily, slows him down. He gets away. He gets the first down across the 30, 35, down to the 40, down to the 45. Cuts back field to the center of the field. He's at midfield, down to the 45, down to the 40, down to the 35. There are no flags. He's going to go, and he is led by a whole troop of Dothan High Tigers. He goes all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Dothan. Dothan, that's a 75-yard pass completion to Mr. Larry Brackens, and he ran all 75 of it because that was actually behind the line of scrimmage. And I couldn't tell the wide receiver over there with him, Jason Wright, with the first block that springs him, and then Larry Brackens sees the daylight, cuts back against the grain, goes in with a host, with an escort, if with you will. Escort. He had, there were more Dolphin Eye Tigers behind him and escorting him than there were uh, Auburn Tigers chasing him. That was good for 75 yards for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. They go up now by a score of six to nothing. And of course, attempting the point after will be B.J. Hall. Dennis Dury is the holder. There is a snap. There's a placement of the ball that is through the upright. So at the 339 mark of the first period, the Dolphin High Tigers get on the board. Seven to nothing. Good decision last week. Uh, Larry Brackett's trying to do that with all the cuts and everything. Could have, you know, injured himself even more severely than just a slight strain. But again, you got to give the credit. We're going to go ahead and give it to Wright because I believe he's the one that lined up over there the first block. Then Larry made made one miss, and then the escort picked him up, and it's clean green. Unofficially, we have Stephen Hughes now, three for four, 116 yards here in the first period. And also, the Dothan High defense has been very stingy. They have not allowed any points in the first period thus far in the first two games. But now we've got the 349 mark of the first period. Seven up in the ball game. 
getting ready to kick off with open high tigers. And of course, it's BJ Hall as he will approach the ball. The open defense is defending the goal to our right. This one is going to be a low streamer. It hits the ground at about the 25, picked up at the 17 yard line, getting cutting it across, getting across the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, down the midfield, open territory. One tackler, and I'll tell you what, he stumbled over his own feet. Tyrone Ware that time looked like he might have stumbled over a teammate's foot because there were Dope High Tigers ready to make the tackle, but they actually did not make the tackle. I think he really stumbled over his, uh, his uh, uh, teammate's foot. BJ Hall wouldn't let him get to the outside, mm -hmm. fighting back into the block. And as he was there, where it just didn't move back enough to the inside or possibly could have went into the end zone with it. And again, falling down over his own feet. Now you have a chance to stop him. But again, the Dothan Tigers giving up huge chunk of yardage on the kickoff return. 339, 329 here in the first period from the Dothan 42 yard line, first and 10. Faking the pitch out, there's a pass. It's sla it is slapped down, falls incomplete. Get Kevin Branch again, trying a little trickery, trying to hit the, the uh, wide receiver over there, King. That time with a little fake, Branch got his hands up and the ball was straight up in there. Nobody saw it that time, just a free one. That brings up a second down situation, second and 10 from outside the 41 yard line for the Auburn Tigers. The Dothan Eye Tigers leading as we go under the three minute mark in the first period. Final score of seven to nothing, double wing formation. Now they send Ware in motion. This time faking the handoff, rolling to his right. Spillers is being pursued. He gets away from would-be tackler, gets the ball away. It's going to be overthrown. Two intended receivers over here on the near side. Tay Allen was one of the receivers, but they just couldn't throw it. And really, Spillers was just trying to get rid of it because breathing down his neck, I believe Tyler Black was one of the men breathing down his back. And I believe Brad Addison was the other, trying it just in hot pursuit. Not quite enough steps to get there. And fortunately for the, uh, for the Auburn Tigers, he's able to get rid of it and not lose 10, 12 yards. Okay, Spillers got rid of it. He really wasn't wor worried about the uh, reception. He was worried about the interception. We've got a third down and 10 situation outside the Dalton 41-yard line. Waiting to the right side. This time, making the handoff again. Dropping back, look out for the screen pass on the left side. It's set up beautifully over to Moore. Moore gets running room inside the 30, down to the 25, down to the 20. Still pushes forward. He has knocked out of bounds on the far side inside the 20-yard line. Boy, that developed nicely. He just followed. He blocked the tight rope along that far sideline. Well, they sold the Dalton Tigers on the screen pass. Because when he picked up the football, all he had was the white shirt in front of him. Made the good run, got what he could get. Dennis Jerry, number 15, and keeps him from going into the end zone. And also, a lot of times we get, a lot of times we don't see the screen pass set up as far to the side as we, as we did right there. But uh, again, as they they drew the Dolphin right. Tigers and the Dolphin uh, were able or just let them get them to there. Nobody there, and good play for Auburn. Giving him a shot at the score on the 21. Two bad minutes to go in the first period. Handoff again this time. Going to the big man, Sean Bailey. Bailey is stopped at the line scrimmage. Might have got a yard. There's a trio of Dolphin High Tigers all over his back and leading the way for the Dolphin High Tigers. I believe that is Tyler Black. Black is one of the men who is the last to get up for Dolphin. Gabe Davis as well as Herschel Bailey there. And again, Dolphin Tigers right there in the hole. No gain at all, hardly on first down. Okay, second and long nine situation. We're at about the two minute mark. We'll be under two minutes when the snap is made. We got Lovett going to the left side. They got a double wing formation. Spillers is the junior quarterback. Big snaps and the man in motion this time. Takes the hand up, dropping back, rolling to his right. Look out, there's a man inside and it falls off the fingertips. Diving for it, I'll tell you what, had he been a little bit taller, those long arms would have made the catch, but it falls incomplete. That's going to bring up a third down situation, third and nine. If Spillers had it to do all over again, I believe he would have set his feet a little bit better, not let the ball float on out there away from him, but again, a good effort on the play, almost coming up with a great kick. Again, also good defensive pursuit that time because I think uh, I think Spillers could hear footsteps in the background. Branch was coming in right behind him. Okay, third down and a nine situation. We're outside the 21-yard line for the Auburn Tigers, 145. There is, that's what the clock is showing. 7 nothing ball game. Auburn, the Golden High Tigers are trying to defend that to stop. Offensive stop right here. Has hand off to Ware. Ware gets running room inside the 15-yard line. He's going to be about two or three yards short of the first down. Down to the 15 and a half, 15-yard line. That's going to bring up the fourth down situation. Fourth and about two and a half, three yards for the Auburn Tigers. Well, decision time. Do we go for three? The kicker had plenty of leg to get it in from around 40 yards, 45, and it looks like without any hesitation, they're going for the first down here. They're going for the first down. We'll be right at about a little over one minute to go when the snap is made. Break the huddle. Of course, Brent Engel is the snapper. 
Spiller to look out for the quarterback keeper. This time hands off. First back through. Going over the right side. No, he might have the ball. It's not loose. Dolphin might come up with it. But still popping around there. Let's see if Dolphin does come up with it. We saw it come up once, come up twice. And it's going to be Dolphin's ball. Dolphin's ball. And of course, the second effort by Tyrone. He really had it popped out of there once. Dolphin got it. Then it looked like it came out of the pile again. Dolphin fell out again. I believe Calvin Branch comes up with it. Calvin Branch comes up with that fumble recovery in a big, big defensive play by the Dolphin High Tigers. Because on the fumble, if the white shirts gets it, it's first and 10. Right. It looks like it came out far <laughs> enough down the field. And that's one of those, excuse me, if I kick it forward, <laughs> things it looks like. But Dolphin alertly gets to the football and does not give up a first down. That's a huge stop for the Tigers. It's a huge stop. Under one minute to go in the first period. Dolphin High takes over at just outside their 8-10-yard line. Handoff going to the lone running back for the Dolphin High Tigers in the backfield. I believe that's Rab. Rab, the running back, gets, uh, we got about three yards on the play, gets it out to about the 13-yard line. You got another Dolphin got Tiger, one of, the, one of the And that looks like it's Kevin, uh, Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown is down for the Dolphin High Tigers. I'll tell you what, let's go back to that. You're right. I, and that's what I was thinking here and not saying it, but I saw the uh, the ball pop out and there was a white jersey around Kelvin Branch and I'm thinking, well, if they recover this, that's going to be a first down. But fortunately, Kelvin probably proved to be the stronger of the two on that play. Well, you're looking in a situation, if nobody's there, yeah, you try to pick it up and run with it, but that's such a big play and so many people around, you fall on it and try to get it as they look to the injury. Looks like he's going to get up. Kevin Brown to him off. coming off. And uh, do we see... Uh, was, do we see Barry Elliott around here somewhere? I've been looking for him on the sidelines. I cannot tell. Um, the extent of the injury because he's he hidden here from our view. Okay, 68. Joe Neal will come into the ball game for the Dolphin Eye Tigers who's in place of uh, Kevin Brown. Up front, A.J. Deanhard along with Giselle Thomas, John Kirkland, Dave Gardner. Ryan Odom, of course, he's been lining up the fullback spot. A wide out coming over here to the near side of the field, to the left side. And, of course, Jonathan Mathis, Brackens, along with the Homer over on the far side. Odoms and Rab, the two running backs from the Dolphin Eye Tigers on a second down situation. Second and seven. Gave him three for Rab. Rab again gets a handoff. He gets the call. He is straightened up. Not until he gets direct to about the 15-yard line. Rab gained a couple on that. That's going to make it a third down situation. Third and a long five. Just straight at him football that time. And again, with the two tackles and the five linemen along out of scrimmage, the Auburn Tigers are able to get off the tackle and get good penetration and not allow the Dolphin tail back to get started. Okay, they're going to let the clock wind down, and that's going to end the first period. At the end of the first period, the Dolphin High Tigers lead by a score of 7 0. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. We've got a third and a long five. Boy, we lost yardage on the play. We were, it was third and five, and all of a sudden we've got third and about six situation. It seemed like we lost about a yard on that. They got a flag down. We Somebody got movement. I do not did not see one of the offensive linemen move. And we've got a jump, just a good hard count that time by Hughes getting the free five, the free five, and now third and one's a lot better. Third and one is definitely a lot better for the Dolphin Eye Tigers instead of a definite, almost a definite passing situation. You've got uh, a place where you got to try a few things here on a third and short yardage situation for the Dolphin Eye Tigers just on the 20 yard line. Stephen Hughes will come off the sidelines from the sidelines with the play. Now they break the huddle. Got double wide house. Brackens along with Mathis over here to the uh, right side of the field. Sends Brackens in motion. Bracken, here's the pitch on going to Brackens. He tries to find running room. He does. He gets it across the 20 and just barely. I'll tell you what, his six foot five frame might have helped him get the first down on that one. Just a good effort there. Good hard running. Took a couple of hits short of the first down yardage and then turned it up the field. And again, when you don't have much, that good tough run in that second effort pushes the stage. Dothan has another set of downs. Okay, that is the third first down for the Dolphin Nine Tigers of the uh, ball game. 11 39. The uh, first uh, half just getting underway here. The second period just getting underway. Double wideouts coming out. Again, Bracken and Mathis coming wide out to the right side of the field. Hash mark to the left is where the ball is placed to the far side. Hughes, this time, hands off again to Brad. Brad finds a little bit of running room. He is stopped after about a three yard pickup. He's going to pick up about three to the. Uh, 
We're going to mark it about the 24, so that was about a two-yard pickup for Brown. And again, on the first down for Auburn, they're sitting their linebackers in and just angling them in, and they're just coming hard down the line of scrimmage, and they're getting into the play just by sheer foot speed, Gil. Nobody's there to block them. Okay, double wide outs, Mathis Palmer to the right side, to the left side. Look over there, there is, uh, I think that's Jason Wright on a uh, second down situation. Second and a long eight, 10 48 to go. Hughes drops back, the pass is slapped away, and it falls incomplete. Let's take time out for a station identification. There's Barry right there. I don't know if he's taking the knee right. 10.43 to go here in the first half. The Dolphin Eye Tigers leading by a score of 7 to nothing. You spotted Barry Elliott over there. Finally got him down here, and I, he's there. It looks like the padding is on the leg, but I can't tell if it's on the ankle or the knee. A third down situation, third and a long seven. Hughes again dropping back. He is being pursued. He's rolling to his right. He's being rushed by a couple of defensive linemen. He gets it out there. Look out. It could be. Oh, it is incomplete. Well, it actually is completed to Brackens. Brackens was about uh, two feet out of bounds when he made the reception. Well, when you throw the football down the field like that, you give your guy a chance to catch the football. And if he does, you've got a good play. But nobody else can. Larry Brackens, again, as we've already said, has a few inches on the cornerback. And when he throws it up, would have been a big play, but Dolphins going to get to punt it, have to punt it away from their own 24-yard line. And back to receive for the Auburn Tigers will be a look plan more. Moore will be inside his own 40, inside his 45-yard line. 10 to 34 to go in the first half. 7 nothing ball game. There's a snap, a two-man rush put on. This is a high spiral, fair catch call. And it's going to take a Dolphin bounce inside the 45, down to about the 45-yard line. Sean Bailey calls for a fair catch. He moves away from it. It's going to be a first and 10 for the Auburn Tigers inside their own 45-yard line. Good kick coverage on the punt, allowing it to hit the ground. Auburn not in position to make the catch, so they pick up another five, six yards. First and 10 for them on their own 44. Both teams are getting three first downs thus far at the 10-23 mark of the first half. However, Dolphin put it in the end zone by virtue of 75 yard pass play from Stephen Hughes to Larry Brackens going wide out to the right side now is Patrick Levitt got a wing T formation wing to the right handoff this time again going to Moore Moore tries to find running room he tried to turn outside turn the corner outside had to cut back in he has stopped after about a two yard pickup got across the 45 to the 46 yard line Kevin Branch the first one there on the play with help from Tyler Black and that's just good movement down the line of scrimmage Definitely is, and I'll tell you what, that time Moore really wanted to go outside. He, he saw that he had nothing to do as far as turning the corner, so he cut back in, unable to find any running room there. Second and eight situation, under 10 to go in the first half. Single wide out, wing key to the left side. Spillers this time just lays it up there. Look out, it could be intercepted. There's a flag on the play on the far side. Might be a little pushing off from the indication of the coaching staff over there on the far side. It's against the Dothan High Tigers. Against Dothan High with the, with a, what you call just a fade up the sidelines. You take a quick or the two-step drop and just angle it. We saw Hughes do it here. We'll do it. Connect with Larry Bracken. The contact is made at about six yards from the line of scrimmage, and it's going to turn into a first and ten. First down situation for the Auburn Tigers. That is their fourth first down. They don't need any help. They've been moving it out with, they've been moving the ball downfield without our help. We sure don't have to give them any. Moves it to inside the Dolphin 40 at the 39 yard line, where it'll be a first and 10 for a, Zach Spillers and the Auburn Tigers. He uses more and wear of Allen in the backfield. Wide out going out to the right side is Travis Alston. Wing T to the right. More and Ware, the two running backs, this time handoff going to Ware. Ware tries the corner. He is stopped in the backfield and doing a fine job. Jonathan Mathis came came out of his uh, defensive back position to stop him behind the line of scrimmage. Good play by Jonathan Mathis. And again, the pursuit there because Ware's not going down real easy tonight. Gill, tough running back. But again, Mathis cut the pins out from under him with some help. They lose two. Okay, I mean, I'll tell you what, Ware looks like he's a very compact runner. It looks like he is very hard to just bring down an open field. He's going to be hard to bring down an open field, the open eye Tigers. But thus far, they've held him pretty much in check. Double wing formation now, single running back. 
Where's the wing? Goes in motion this time. He gets the call. He's going to halfback option pass. The pass is going to be incomplete. It's overthrown, and the man, Patrick Levitt, had his man beat, and it was just overthrown by about a half a step that time for the Auburn Tigers, and it falls incomplete. And Mathis that time after coming in just a little bit too much on the fake when he took the old bait, hook, line, and sinker. He had him open, but again, just a little bit overthrown. That brings up a third down situation, third and about 12. A little trickery for the Auburn Tigers. They try and uh, they try and loosen up the defense of the Open Eye Tigers. They've been stingy, like we say, in the first three games now. They have not allowed any points in the first period. They go on a third down situation right at the 41-yard line. Spillers dropping back, trying to look like he's going to set it up over here on the left flat. The pass is complete and going out of bounds at the 26-yard line. The pass is complete to Travis Elston. And covering over here was Dennis Dury. Dury along with Jonathan Mathis over here. However, a nice reception that time by Travis Elston. And a big play for the Auburn Tigers because it's going to give them another set of downs just outside the 26-yard line. One of those long throws across the football field. Just not enough reaction in the football on the football as it was thrown. Allows them to bring it in and move those chains. They got it in just inside the open 27-yard line. Wing T to the right side. Single wide out to the left. Here's Adolph again. Where? Where? Gets by one tackler. Oh, slowing him down and pulling him down is Larry Brackens. Brackens pulls him down. I'll tell you, the man who slowed him down, I believe, uh, was that was that uh, Herschel Bailey? Bailey Herschel like. Bailey. Herschel Bailey slowed him down just enough to, for Larry Brackens to come up from his defensive back position and wrestle him down behind the line of scrimmage. They uh, got him down. They didn't put it down at about the 27-yard line. So that's going to be a second and ten. They say no progress. He got to the line of scrimmage. Just a good job by Bracken and company that time by Larry not allowing him to get loose after he wrapped him up because there's nothing but the sideline and Auburn blue and white over there. Sylvester Bone coming into the ball game for the Open Eye Tigers. He'll take up somewhere in that uh, defensive tackle spot on the uh, left side of the defensive line for the Open Eye Tigers. Second and ten. Sending where again in motion this time. Rolling on the fake. Look out. Steelers has got it. Got it inside the 25. Down to the 20. He's going to run out of bounds at the 12-yard line. And he's very close to a first down. He might have. Yeah, yeah. He might have got a first down, but I'll tell you what, he must know exactly where it was because he ran out of bounds and he might have gotten an extra yard or two had he needed it. Well, had he needed it, he could have put those shoulders down and it's going to be important here on the spot as they're lining it up across the field. Again, they had all the movement going to the right side of the offensive line and then St Spillers on the keeper found wide open field a lot of green real estate over here on the near side the left side of the field and he ran it inside the Dolphin 20 yard line down to about the 17 yard line. Well that all that's going to happen every time your defensive end closes down too much and allows him to get outside your backside containment has to get as deep as the ball is so that doesn't happen and I believe old Kevin Branch got a little bit too anxious in there and let him give up the containment. That gives him a first down by about a two football Lines. First down for the Auburn Tigers. Now they are threatening again. Last time they turned it over. Now they have the ball at the Dolphin 16 and a half yard line. 16 and a half yard line. First and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. They are on the move. However, we have kept them out. Once they get in the red zone, the Dothan Tigers have become very selfish. Going wide out to the right side is Trey Story. This time Handoff going to wear, wear up the middle. Gets inside the 10, down to the 5. He's going to go into the end zone. Touchdown. Hope flags on the play. And it is a 17-yard run by number seven, Tyrone Ware. And the Dolphin Tiger defense that time, a little bit of confusion in lining up. They did not get their defense set before the ball was snapped. And in the confusion, Ware sees daylight. He knows what to do with it, Gil. And at 7.54, they put six on the board. Okay, 7-6 ball game, the Dolphin High Tigers. Have it up by one, but looking to tie it up, Auburn. It's going to be Russell, Russell the kicker, Alex Russell, Russell's left-footed kick. Gets it high through the uprights, and it looks like we're tied. We are tied at the 7.54 mark of the first half. The scoreboard reads, Dothan 7, Auburn 7. At the 7.54 mark, Russell puts it through the uprights for the extra point, and that's where we stand right now, 7-7. Seven, seven. And it's been all Tyrone Ware for the Auburn Tigers, and it's been Larry Bracken for the Dothan Tigers. And again, we're doing the majority of the work on the ground for Auburn. Larry with the big touchdown reception and the good moves. 
to take it in from on the big plays. And really, Auburn has just kept the ball, kept time of possession, and kept that Dolphin Tiger defense on the field. I tell you what, we talked about the stingy defense by the Dolphin Line Tigers in the first period. The second period, now they have allowed a touchdown in the second period of each of their first three games. They have held, the, the defense has held the, the opposition scoreless in the first period. Right now, we're tied up at seven apiece. Larry Brackens is the deep man for the Dolphin Line Tigers. The up in will be Fulmer on the far side, near side, I believe this will be uh, Jonathan Mathis, 7.54 to go. And getting ready to kick off is Alex Russell. Russell's left-footed kick, puts it end over end. It's going to go for the corner. Brackens will get it at the three-yard line. He gets it across the five, across the ten. Has marked to the right. 20, 25, 30, 35, down to the 38-yard line. And boy, you can see the hole, the hole in his eyes brightened up from here as he accelerated. He downshifted, put it into overdrive. He got it to the 37-yard line with the man to stop him. You take a look at Welsh and Robertson in there for the Auburn Tigers. So a good run back that time. Inside the five, all the way to the door. Open 37 yard line. You're talking a run back of about 35 yards for Larry Brackens and the Dolphin Eye Tigers. And with, the, and with the injuries there to, to Barry Elliott, looks like the Dolphin Tigers are going shotgun formation. Okay, now let's see what we've got. We've got an official timeout. Okay, Auburn decides to call timeout here. And they apparently, I don't, do they have too many men out there? Two, four, I counted six, 12. Eight, 10, 12. You're right, they had 12 men out there. They had 12, and they wanted to call timeout at the 7.52 mark. Let's take a timeout. We're all tied up at 7 apiece, 7.52 to go in the first half. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. See that they got wrapped. He's done for them. He's got the pads and all on. Both teams back out on the field at the 7.52 mark of the uh, first half. On a uh, first and ten for the Dolphin Eye Tigers at their own 37-yard line. Out of the shotgun formation. Stephen Hughes dropping back. He's got, he's got, he's got him. The downfield He's going to intercept it on the far side of him for Brackens. And the ball pops loose. It's going to be falling around for it. Intercepted by the Auburn Tigers' Chris King. And let's see who came up with it number, on that. Number 12 for number them. Number 12 for the Auburn Tigers, Sean Bailey. Bailey comes up with it. The pass intended for Larry Bracken stepping in front of it that time for the Auburn Tigers was uh, Chris King. King ran it on the far sideline, got it down to the 30, then it popped loose, and Sean Bailey fell on it, so it's going to be Auburn's ball inside the 30-yard line. Boy, that time it was one of those that uh, I think Stephen Hughes would love to have back right about now because there were a couple of big Auburn Tigers breathing down his neck, and he managed to get, away, get it away, but it fell into the arms of an Auburn Tiger. First and 10. This time, dropping back is Spillers. Spillers is rolling to his right. He is looking downfield. Look out. The pass is going to fall incomplete and trying to uh, jump on the far side. That's Oscar Andrews. Andrews trying to uh, jump the defender over on the far side. The pass falls incomplete, fortunately. But, he, but again, Kevin Branch coming from this side, getting some pressure on Spillers, not letting him get his feet set to get the ball down the field. Overthrown, and again, second down and 10. Barry Elliott, who gained over 300 yards in the first two games for the Auburn Tigers. We won't see him anymore tonight. He's got the pads and everything off, and he's got his uh, knee wrapped. So it's a second down and 10 situation for the Auburn Tigers inside the Dolphin 30 yard line. Spillers again at quarterback. Timeout now. He didn't like what he saw. And that's going to be at least the second timeout. At the 732 mark here of the first half. Stadium, the Dolphin Eye Tigers defense again spending some time out on the field. And uh, coach, we've got to get, take care of that. We've got to resolve that and get that offense to get a couple of drives going where that defense won't be spending that much time on the field. Let them get a rest. And again, Albert's coming to the football. Dolphins just a little late getting out there, getting set for the play. Okay, on a, a second and ten situation. Now from the uh, just inside the Dolphin 30 yard line, Ware is going in motion. They fake on a uh, reverse play, going trying to work some running room to the outside. Good, good defensive pursuit that time, leading the way and stretching the play out for the Dolphin High Tigers. That was Justin Doan. Doan, or was it uh, Kevin Griggs? Kevin Griggs, Griggs. Is the one who stretched the play out. Griggs stretched it out, and uh, that was a loss of about a yard on the play. And also coming up to help number 91, they hadn't called his name much. Yeah, 91, Jarvis Dean. And doing a good job making the hit, giving Auburn third and long. And again, the screen pass worked to perfection. 
on the same similar situation earlier in the game. Third and 11 situation. This time they've got the hash mark to the left side, to the near side is where Auburn has the ball. Zach Spillers is the quarterback. Wing T to the right side, that would be where. Where gets the handoff. But nope, they fake the screen over to the left side. They get it over to inside the 30, down to the 25 yard line. They're going to be short of a first down. And that at the uh, receiving end was number one, Travis Elston. Elston got it on the screen and he got it to the uh, Dolphin just outside the Dolphin 25 yard line, which is going to bring up a fourth down situation. And again, decision time. Mm -hmm. Do they bring on the kicker again? We've already said he does have the leg to get it in there. A uh, little bit of hesitation here, and I wouldn't be surprised to go ahead and see them call their last timeout. Nope. nope they're, not going to, they're going to come in with the play. But if they've got the hurry now, they're going to use their 25. Levitt comes in with the play. Spillers has done a good job quarterbacking this team. They break the huddle. Let's see where Ware is. Ware lines up. A double wing formation. A wing to the left side. Ware goes in motion. This time. He fakes the handoff, rolling again to his right as Spillers. Spillers is looking downfield. He lays it up there. It's going to be way out of bounds. No one that had anybody. Anybody was close to it. Nobody in the field of play. So it falls incomplete. The Dolphin Line Tigers will take over from their own 25-yard line. It's six and a half to go. It's very important for us to uh, substantiate some offense right and here. now that offense has got to come on, not necessarily having to score right now, right. but a couple of first downs, get some possession, keep that defense off the field and let them get a blow. Unofficially, I have Dolphin for three first downs. Six, seven for the Auburn Tigers. Stephen Hughes works out of a uh, shotgun formation. Twin wide outs to the left, to the right. The hash marks to the uh, near side. The right side is the closest where the ball is just inside the hash marks to the right side. Brackens along with Stanley. The two wide outs over here to the right. Taking the handoff up to Rab. Rab. Tries to find some running room. He does. A stutter step to the 30, 31, the 32 yard line. Nice pickup, a nice second effort. There's a flag on the play. Usually, where that comes in, we've got a whole call. And uh, he threw it right down in the vicinity of the Dolphin High Tigers, Giselle Thompson. Thomas. You're right, it's a hold against the Dolphin High Tigers. Very costly penalty right there after a fine, fine run by Rav. Well, you need some kind of offensive mm. set. Rav mm. gets a pretty good game. Had he looked like he ran into his own man there again as he got to the line of scrimmage, had he bounced to the right or left, it looked like he had a lane on either side of the blocker. But even if you get a touchdown when you hold, they're going to bring them back every right. time. Instead of a game of about seven, we drop it back to the 21-yard line. That brings up first and long. It'll be first and long. We've got to get to our own, outside our own 35-yard line for a first down. Hughes will work out of the uh, shotgun formation again. Twin wide out to the left, to the right for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Round in the backfield. There is a snap, dropping back, looking to his right. The pass is complete, looking to his left. Pass is complete to Fulmer. Gets him to about the 25-yard uh, line. Fulmer doing a good job getting all he could out of that one. He was wrapped with both of, with the Auburn Tigers and still picked up the better part of seven. Second and 11 situation for the Dolphin High Tigers. Second and 11. Hughes taking the long count from H.A.D. North, the center. Gets a snap this time. Again, here's the play we scored 75 on. Tries to get it to uh, Larry Brackens. The pass is complete. And Brackens gets it across to about the 31-yard line. That was good for about six yards. We've got an official timeout on the field at the 542 mark. So when we come back, we'll have a third down situation through to about six. 542 to go in the first half. The scoreboard reads Dolphin 7, Auburn 7, back in 60 seconds. Stephen Hughes takes the snap. He's looking to his left. He's being pursued. All oh, stumbles to the ground, falls. The ball falls loose, and it's going to be jumped on by the Auburn Tigers. So Stephen Hughes, Stephen Hughes trying to run out of the pursuit of the Auburn Tigers, rolling to his left, stumbles and falls, trying to regain his balance, Coach. The ball falls loose behind him. There's nothing he could do. He couldn't get back to it. The Auburn Tigers recover on the big turnover by the Dolphin High Tigers just outside the Dolphin 20-yard line. And the momentum swing now from the early score of the Dolphin team put on the board. 
Auburn has taken that and the momentum is wearing the white and blue. 5.26 to go in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven ball game from outside the Dolphin 21-yard line. Levitt wide out to the right side. Double wing formation. Now Ware goes in motion. Making the handoff going to the first man through. Finding some running room all the way in the end zone. On touch. Touchdown Auburn. Auburn going in from 21 yards out. And that of course on the running back. That's Lockwood, Todd, Lockwood Moore. Moore got it. And he goes in from 21 yards out at the 519 mark. And the wing tee working, showing you why most teams have gone to that now. A little bit of misdirection, just you've been running where from the motion play. That time you trout coming back against the grain. Unbalanced line to the right. When he pops it, nobody's there. He goes in, and Auburn takes the lead. Russell will attempt the point after. And it is good. So at the 519 mark, the Oakland Line Tigers find themselves down for the first time this year, 14 to 7 right now. The Oakland Line Tigers, of course, big, big turnover, and they've really got to regroup. It looks like uh, they haven't been the same since Barry Elliott left the game. Well, Barry Elliott's been so much of that offense over 300 yards, as we said before we kicked off this one, Gil, but now he's down. We've got to have somebody step up and take over that position. And again, everything, the breaks have all gone the other Tigers way if you will and when you shorten the field to 20 yard, 21 yards as we said the quick trap one play they put it on the board and still plenty of time to get something offensively started we've had some success with kickoff returns to Larry Bracken I wouldn't be surprised to see him kick a squibber or kick it away from Larry here also I wouldn't be surprised maybe to see Larry in the backfield for the Oakland Tigers we've seen him run a few plays from that uh, backfield slot Okay, he has got one reception tonight for 75 yards. Well, he's got a couple now. He's got these. He's, he caught the, the second good for about six or seven. So he's got about 80, 81 yards in two receptions for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. He'll be the deep man. However, you got up man Dennis Dury on the far side. Jonathan Mathis over here on the near side of the 10-yard line. They're just as dangerous as running the back. They've got good speed. Dolphin's got good speed out there right now. And Russell Willow holds the ball. The left-footed kicker will be kicking. Coaches the ball, and he's going to put it. You're right, it's a squibbler. It's going to be fielded by Mathis. Nope, he's going to let Brackens have it. Brackens has a 13, the 15, the 20, the 25, gets across the 30, down to the 32-yard line, where he is piled on by at least no less than four Auburn Tigers. For a fine run back, Mathis let Larry Brackens have it. Brackens, I'm sure, was shouting, let me have it, let me have it. And he did. He got a nice run back all the way to the outside the Dolphin 31-yard line. And now that definitely no more mistakes here. Get something going here offensively. Got to have it here, Gil. Okay, in the backfield, Odom, along with Rab in the backfield, out of a shotgun for Stephen Hughes. Setting a man in motion. This time, handoff going to Rab. Rab tries to find running room. He saw very little daylight on that play. Tried to go over the left side, couldn't make it. Nance coming in now to take over at quarterback, too. Nance for the uh, Dolphin Eye Tigers. Brett Nance is a junior. See if he can generate some offense, some new offensive movement for the Dolphin Tigers. There was no gain on the play by Rab. Rab now has carried the ball unofficially. We have for two, four, six carries, about uh, 14, 15 yards. Brett Nance is the quarterback. There is a snap from center. Here's the pitch out going over to Rab. Rab tries to turn the corner. Gets it to the 40. Very close to the first down. Might have picked up about nine on the play. Very close to 10. A nice pitch out by Nance that time. Pitch out going to Rab on the left side. Rab quickly found running room on the far side of the field. Got it across the 40 to about the 42 yard line. He's going to be, he might be shy of the first down. No. Nope, they're going to mark it. Good play by the Dolphin Nine Tigers. Like I say, this is what we need. We don't necessarily need to score. We need to establish some kind of offense, what we haven't done in the first quarter now. And coming out with a shotgun for we have not seen Dolphin run the option down the line. Uh, Nance doing a good job, pitched out to Rab, and he got it up the field in. Okay, going in motion this time is Fulmer again. Rab tries to find running room. He turns the corner. Look out, is he going to be stopped? He's going to be pulled down behind the line of scratch, down around the 39-yard line, doing a fine job of pursuing him is Quake France. France running that line of scrimmage and unable to turn the corner is Rab. Rab is pulled down from behind. He lost about two yards on the play with 3.48. The clock moving time left in the first half. A 14-7 ball game. Auburn leads the Dolphin High Tigers. And instead of having a big play, we've got just one of those jersey tackles that didn't turn him loose. And again, you've got to give him credit for holding on. But if, if, they, if he's able to get away and get up the field, he's going to get close to first down yardage on the Mathis play. Brackens far out to the left side, to the right side, to the near side is Jason Wright. 
Again, dropping back, looking. The pass is complete. Going to Larry Brackens. Brackens very close to a first down. That 6 5 frame stretches over the 50 yard line of midfield right to Auburn territory. And that's going to be close to a, very, uh, to a first down. Again, that 6 foot 5 frame coming in handy. And again, tough because he took a shot right in the back that time, Gil, as he was still moving those feet forward. And Nance right on target with his pass. I was going to say that was a very well thrown ball because you had a defender on the backside and right behind uh, Larry Brackens. That ball had to be threaded and he found the needle. He threaded it. So we've got a third down and short yard situation. Third and about one to go for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. We are at the 49 yard line of the Auburn Tigers. Out of the, uh, well, there's a first down. We've got first down yardage. Yep. Heels off one tackler at the 45 down to the 43 yard line. And uh, Tim Rabb gets the first down for the Dolphin High Tigers. That time he just stayed behind his blocker. Uh, they did a good job. I don't know who was that, 72? Was that James Gardner? That's Gardner, number 72. Mm -hmm. And they did a little crossing action in the backfield to give those linebackers something else to look at. And when Rab bumped into the blocker, uh, he just stayed right there. And when he saw the daylight to the outside, he puts his own in there. Good game, first and 10. Gardner did a good job of holding yep. the blocker that time, holding the defender and let uh, Rab cut to his right, get the first down. So we got first and 10 for the Dolphin Eye Tigers at the 43 yard line. Head off again, going to Rab inside the 40, down to the 35 yard line. He pulls a couple of tackles with him, gets inside the 34, the 32 yard line. Nice, by almost a 10 yard pickup for Tim Rab. Rab getting a little confidence now. He's been handed the ball on a few plays. Hey, he's got a little confidence. He knows he's not going to be in one play, out the next play. So I think he's running with a little bit more confidence. A good nine-yard pickup for Rab. And he did show the confidence on that play, Gil. He's running behind Odin's block, and he just followed him in there just like you teach him. And again, the results are going to be another first down, moving the chains. 153 to go in the first half. Dothan, let's see if we can knock on the door a little bit, maybe get at least three points out of this. From the 32-yard line, we get a few more yards. We're well within the distance of the Dolphin High kicker, B.J. Hall. Now you got Odom along with Rab in the backfield. Dolphin wants to call timeout. A little confusion there in the backfield for uh, Nance and the Dolphin High Tigers. Well, coming up to the line, looked like Nance was going to go under center to start the play. But then again, is he back throwing the ball? And again, really giving the team a little bit of a lift because they started moving. But then again, you've got to look at Rab's performance now, the last couple of carries. His confidence is building. And again, you know, every time somebody gets hurt, it does take your mind off a little bit of the game. Okay, they've got Nance running out of the shotgun. His shotgun, his lone setback is Rab right alongside of him. There's the snap. He's looking downfield. The pass is going to be complete to Brackens. Brackens pulls it down. He's get pulled down inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. I'll tell you what, I am very impressed by Larry Brackens able to go in traffic. That's what impresses me. I mean, when you're 6'5", it's easy to leap over. But I'll tell you what, tonight he has made some good receptions in traffic. He, hey, he gives him a good target. The ball hits his number one right on his chest. And there it is. Big target. Big target. Yeah, I tell you what, when you're, when you're sitting back there throwing, and again, as, as he gets, he is physical, and he don't mind mixing it up. Again, a first down for the Dolphin Eye Tigers inside the 20. This time, out of keeper play. Looks like it might have been a mix-up, but Nance gets it down to the 15-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 14, and uh, there might have been a little confusion on the play. It might have been a broken play. He goes off to the left side. He just gets downfield, gets inside the 15-yard line. We're under 50 seconds to go here. They've got to hurry up and get the snap off. He got his line. He's got his line set. We've got to get it off. One more play and call it quickly. Call the timeout. He's going to go for it. Rolling to his left. He's being pursued. Got to get rid of it. He's got it at five yard, 15 yard line. 10, five. He gets out of bounds inside the five yard line. Boy, what a play that time. It looked like he was going to be uh, got down from behind by Demarcus Kirk. Kirk was pursuing him. However, it looked like, hey, there might have been a little speed on Nance's feet because he got the ball inside, inside the 10, down to the 5. They're going to mark it at about the 2.5-yard line, 2-yard line, where it'll be a first and goal for the Dolphin Eye Tigers with 36 seconds to go in the first half. And more importantly, Gil, he gets out of bounds to mm -hmm. stop the clock. Kirk, uh, the Kirk just couldn't hold on to him, and when Nance got to the sidelines, had the speed to take it down, almost touched down, but now Dolphin coming in, going to put a tight end on the ground, and... Tyler Black, the other running back, first and goal. Back. First and goal for the Dolphin High Tigers. This time, handoff going to Rab. Rab is going to go and look out. Is he going to carry him? Nope. He is pulled back at the one yard line with 29 seconds to go. Let's quick call. Quick call the timeout here with 26 seconds to go in the first half. That time it looked like Rab might have gone. He went forward off the right side of the offensive line. Couldn't find a hole there. Tried to work outside. It looked like he might go into the end zone. However, he was pulled down from behind. And uh, i tell you what, in steer wrestling, they'd have gotten points. Well, I'll tell you what, Gil, uh, they got him just down just soon enough, too. I couldn't tell the number of the cornerback that came in that helped out. And that's 
again, as you said, the confidence of Tim Rabb, no give up in him at all. And if it hadn't been for the second Auburn Tiger coming up, Rabb was going to cross that white line down there for the point. I don't know, look for maybe Ryan Odom, 6'2", 220 pounds. Tyler Black is going to be in there. So uh, Black, Odom, let's we'll see where Odom lines up. Odom will line up on the tight end spot to the left side. Back there's Tyler Black along with Rab. 26 seconds to go here on a second and goal. Nance lines up over center, hands off, left side, whoa, upended. And yeah, they're going to touch down, they're going to give it to him. Touchdown for those White Tigers, and he was flipped upright. And I'll tell you what, I think he was flipped into the end zone. <laughs> we'll take it we'll any, take way, it. any right. way we we'll can get it. it. But again, you can see from our angle, the hole just opened up right there. Rab gets it in there from the one-yard line, coming off the ball on that left side. Uh, it's going to be uh, Kirkland and... Who's the son? Yeah, Kirkland, Giselle Thomas. And that's Giselle Th Thomas on that side, I believe. Okay, and Drury will hold. There's a snap through the uprights. It looks good, and it is good. So, we've got 21 seconds remaining here in the first half. We're going to keep it right here. We're tied up at 14 apiece. Like we say, that is a drive that the Dolphin High Tigers offense needed. They marched downfield. We said, hey, we don't necessarily have to get any points. We have to use some time. And right there, we gave the defense a rest. Going into the locker room, they're going to get a little extended rest. But we not only used some clock, I think we used about, the, let's see, we used 5.15. We started from our... Footnesses, he got the ball down there at the end zone running a little bit harder. And right here, you just don't want anything strange to happen. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what else I did. I think that gave the offensive line a little bit more confidence. They've been struggling. They've been struggling. they, they, they got to make the holes because hey, you can have all kinds of running backs back there. If you don't have an offensive line, you aren't going anywhere. And this time, it seemed in this offensive series, they were getting off the ball much better, making those holes, making those running backs look good. And making some adjustment on mm -hmm. who's supposed to who block whom. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, of course, this team, and I tell you what, Coach Jimmy Addison and his staff have always done a good job adjusting at halftime. It looks like they adjusted before halftime right here. So we've got to tie it up at 14 apiece, to, uh, 21 seconds to go in the first half for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. They kick off now. We'll have the mayor, Chester uh, Sal, up here at halftime talking to him. Here's the kickoff. This one is going to be a squibber. Whoops, look out. It goes through the hands of an Auburn Tiger lineman. Getting across the 25, looking for some running room at the 30. And he's going to be pulled out of bounds. It's going to be Auburn's ball from their own 33-yard line. The ball carrier on that was Chris King. King. And it was Patrick Levitt. Wing to the left side. And he's going to put it down, put the knee down, and that's going to be the final play of the first half. So, the end of the first half here at Ripview Stadium. The Tigers are tied with the Tigers. It's Auburn 14, Dolphin 14. We'll be back. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network.
your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. Also, we did make comment about the uh, huge flag uh, that is set up across the field, directly across from us here at Berkeley Stadium. The huge American flag, of course, paying tribute, and the flag flying with hats and masks here at tribute for the uh, situation at, in the United States, in New York City, at the World Trade Center, of course, the Pentagon, and the nation's capital. A lot of people showing their respects, and we talked about that with the mayor at halftime. I'll tell you what, also, you, you, everybody's showing their uh, being proud to be an American, and I'll tell you what, it's also nice to see the flags and that. On the young people, a lot of times we don't give the young people enough credit for being patriotic and this type of thing. They, we, we somehow think that they, they're living in another world and that they really don't know what's going on, but I see a lot of flags flying on a lot of young people's cars. Well, a uh, situation like this with the happenings earlier in the week puts things in a whole lot different perspective. You know, we talked about the situation with the pace player down on the field last week and uh, I'm not sure we had mentioned that he's all right and yeah. everything it was again as we said a lot of precautionary measures taken to make sure that the safety of the players come first and uh, when something happens like that uh, uh, as you heard on talk radio before we came on there the coach Bowden uh, talking about it being still just a game um, at the end of this one, we can go get two quarters and put them in a machine and get us a Coco out. That's right. Okay, we've got the defense. Tyrone Ware along with Chris King for the Auburn Tigers. They will receive the kickoff. The Dolphin Line Tigers will be defending the goal to our left. We're ready to go. Dolphin, of course, decked out their black jerseys, black helmets, white numbers with red and black trim. This is and over and. It's going to be fielded by King inside the 10. Gets it across the 15, across the 20, down to the 25-yard line. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 31-yard line where it'll be a first and 10 for the Dolphin Line Tigers. Riding him out of bounds that time, the Dolphin Line Tigers, Nikosi Bush riding uh, King out of bounds, so it's going to be a first and ten for the uh, Auburn Tigers, and I believe uh, King might be down on the play. As he came to the sideline, he couldn't tell whether he rolled up on a leg or what, but again, Dolphin in pretty good shape. Looked like they had number 44, uh, Jared Maddox, down there to make the hit just outside the 20-yard line, but he couldn't quite make the stop, and again, one of the Auburn Tigers down. And as they look like they're looking at that right leg. Branch, Davis, Johnson, Addison up front defensively. Also, I see number 91 in there, Jarvis Dean. In there for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. First and 10 from the Auburn 30 yard line is where they'll start the second half. For tied up at 14 apiece. Ware is going in motion this time. Going the handoff, first man through. And they give it to the back. Gets to the line of scrimmage. That is it. No game on the play. Running with the ball for the Auburn Tigers. Look, uh, Lukeman Moore. That time Moore got bumped by Jarvis. Jarvis got across the line in good shape. Just didn't lock up. Would have had him behind the line. But again, Dolphin reacted well down the line. Kept him right at the line of scrimmage. Second Moore. 10. We're going to give no gain on the play. More of the ball carrier. Levitt wide out to the right side. The lone setback. We got two setbacks. Wing to the right. Here's the pitch out going to Ware. Ware finds running room. Across the 35, across the 40, down to the 45, 46 yard line. He is knocked out of bounds, but not after until he picks up about 16, 17 yards on the play. Ware showing good speed on the play. He's, his ability to turn that corner. He just accelerates once he gets that corner turn and gets to the Auburn 47 yard line. Well, they came out the old unbalanced line right, far side, wide side, and they just did the quick pitch with really nobody pulling, matched up man to man. Then it was a foot bait, foot race down the sidelines. Larry Bracken caught him, pretty good shot there, delivered by both ball players, and put him out of bounds, still in Auburn territory. Double wing formation for the Auburn Tigers from their own 47 yard line handoff. Again, going to the first back through. Look out at the Dolphin 40, the 35, pushed out of bounds. Is Lutman Moore. Moore is pushed out of bounds. Another big pickup that time for the Auburn Tigers. They get it inside the Dolphin 35 to the 33 yard line. Just bounced. Total confusion that time for the Dolphin defense. Again, the quick trap coming back this way. Dolphin not able to plug the hole. Moore took it in from 21 yards and is going to get pretty much 21 more on that play. Gets it inside the Dolphin 35 to about the 33 and a half yard line. Levitt comes in with the play for Spillers. Zach Spillers, the junior quarterback. Makes it up very well. Breaking the huddle is Slayton, the center. Levitt, far to the right side. Again, you got Tay Allen, wing to the right. 
And off again, going to Ware. Ware trying to find running room. He is pulled down from behind. He got the line of scrimmage. He should have been stopped at about the 36. He was able to uh, spin himself loose, got down to the line of scrimmage. Might have gained about a half a yard on the play. That's going to bring up second and, we'll say, second and ten. Well, it looked like Kevin Griggs, outside linebacker over there, had a shot to put him down at about three yards deep. And Ware just put that one hand down, kept those legs turning, and got back to the original line of scrimmage. Ware, a junior running back for the Auburn Tigers. Wing T to the right side. On a second and ten situation again. Here's Andoff going to uh, Ware, I believe. Nope, Ware is outside. They get uh, about maybe a yard on the play. Let's see, the ball carrier on that was uh, number 28. That's Ty Allen. Ty Allen got maybe a yard. So third and nine. Third and nine for the Auburn Tigers. Again, just coming, again, running the short side, wide side of the field, away from the strength of the formation. Dothan reacted well, had them bunched up there, third down and still the better part of 10. Yeah, this might be a passing situation. They bring number 14, Aaron Smith, into the ball game, along with Travis Elston. Elston will come out to the uh, left side here. Now they got double receivers to the right and to the left. On a third and nine situation, third and nine for Spillers. Spillers, they fake the pass play, and they get off to uh, look on Moore. Moore got no gain on the play. He lost a couple of yards. That's going to bring up a fourth down situation. Good read that time by the defensive unit. Well, Gabe Davis, man in the man right there where he needed to be, made the hit, got across the line of scrimmage, and Auburn was trying to spread out Dothan and pop it up the middle where they didn't have anybody. Gabe got the penetration, locked up, put him down, fourth down. It looks like still Auburn's going to go for it. Auburn's going to go for it on a fourth down situation from the Dothan 36-yard line, fourth and about 12. Fourth and 12. Double wideouts left, single to the right side. Spillers drops back this time, hands off on an inside trap, going to Ware. Ware spins away from a couple of tacklers. Finally pulled down, Herschel Bailey. There's a flag on the play. And it looks like it's going to be against the Dothan Eye Tigers. With Auburn clapping like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we had them stopped after about a two or three yard pickup. Face masks the call against the Dothan Eye Tigers. Five yards, mm -hmm. and that still won't move yep, it for the first down yard. Well, that's good. That should be... Dothan should take over right there. But it will give them another fourth down play. Unless he grabbed it after the play and I didn't see him signal the dead ball. We're talking it over with the offensive captain. Tell him what he has to do here. Still fourth down, but they're going to be five yards closer to that first down. They've got, uh, let's see, they've got about seven to go for a fourth and seven situation for the Auburn Tigers now. 824, they gave it to Ware. Ware was able to come up with one or two yards, and that was about it. Good defensive coverage that time by Herschel Bailey. However, he had a bit of inadvertent face mask. Going to the right side is Patrick Levitt. Again, wing to the right. Here's the pitch out going over to the left side for, for Elston. Elston finds running room. He is pushed out of bounds. He's going to be pushed out at the 23-yard line. That's going to be very close to a first down. More the running back. He is pushed out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. Look on the far side. Depending on where the mark is, they had to be outside the 23 for a first down. I can't tell where the official marked the ball. The spot is right inside the, in front of the Dothan High reserves. And there's a lined up. It's going to be close, no question. They're going to take a look at it, and it is going to be a first down for the Auburn Tigers. The big first down it is at the 7.55 mark here of the third period. So that five-yard penalty, inadvertent face mask, Cost the Dothan Eye Tigers right here. They gave them another shot on a fourth down situation. First and 10 for the Auburn Tigers at the Dothan 23-yard line. Just a quick pitch away from the strength of the formation, and then Moore had the speed to get it there, and just enough for the first down. They break the huddle. Slayton is the center. Wing to the right side is Tay Allen. Double wings uh, formation. And off again, going to Ware. Ware tries to find, nope, they roll Spillers. Spillers Spiller's rolling to his right. He's looking downfield. The pass is going to be complete touchdown. Auburn, Auburn, 23-yard touchdown pass at the 747 mark of the third period. Kevin Griggs looked like he was the man back there. Not 
deep enough though. The pass thrown, we've seen Spillers was able to get outside, got the pass up that time, and previously they'd been out of bounds or too much air underneath them. That one comes down. Auburn takes the lead. 7:47 left in the third quarter. 20 to 14 the score. The Auburn Tigers leading, but the nine Tigers now. Russell will attempt the point after. There is a snap. There is a kick. And it goes through the upright. So at the 747 mark of the third period, the scoreboard reads Auburn 21, Dolphin 14. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Three yard touchdown pass. Put it through the uprights. They lead now by a 21 to 14 margin. Larry Brackens will be the deep man for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Russell getting ready to approach the ball. Russell approaches the ball and over, and it's going to be fielded by Mathis at the 15-yard line. Gets it across the 20, across the 25, the 30, the 34-yard line, where he is pulled down. So it'll be a first and 10 for the Dolphin Night Tigers as Levitt pulls, uh, pulls uh, Jonathan Mathis down from the 34-yard uh, line. 35-yard line is where they spot the ball for the Dolphin Night Tigers. Hash mark to the near side. Well, pretty good, decent return with decent field position, and it looks like Nance is still in there directing the Tiger offense. Odom will be at fullback. You got Rav at the tailback spot. Double wideouts going out to the far side, the wide side, the left side of the field for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Rav gets a handoff, finds a hole, gets across Plenty the, of the hay, across the 45. He's into Auburn territory. He's got the 40, the 35. It's a foot race. He's going to win that foot race into the end zone. Tim Rav. Rav, no flags on the play. And a 65-yard touchdown run by the junior running back. Tim Rabb, 65-yard touchdown run. The Dolphin High Tigers took over, and it took them just 18 seconds to pull within one. Well, again, coming out, eye formation, counter play. The Tigers on the other side of the field from Auburn took the fake coming this way. Rabb saw the daylight, has the speed to take it in. Pretty much uncontested into the end zone. Huge play for the Tiger offense at 729. From the 30 yard line, it was just a foot race with two Tigers, two Auburn Tigers right behind them. Rab going into the end zone. There is the kick in through the upright, splitting them is B.J. Hall and quickly, hey, it is just 18 seconds later and we are tied up at 21 apiece. Boy, what a turnaround for the Dolphin High Tigers on that, the first play from the line of scrimmage for the Dolphin High Tigers. Handed off to Rab and Rab, I tell you what, once he got to midfield, he cleared everybody at about the 40-yard line, then he had everybody behind him from the full down before the game was, was started. That You know, when you take a whooping like that at the house, uh, the memory just don't rest with you to none too easy. Well, Dolphin has scored in each of the first three quarters here, something they did not do thus far coming into this third ball game. 21-21 the score. And you will have Tyrone Ware along with Lukeman Moore. Moore will be the far man at the 15 yard line, near sideline. That will be Ware, let's keep it away from Ware. No, they're gonna put it hand over hand, they do. Oh, in oh, the end kick. zone. Good kick, and that time I'll tell you what, all the way into the end zone. So it'll be a first and 10, they'll bring it out from the own 20 yard line. Just best mm. kick coverage you can have is when you put it past the last line down there and again get the good hold on it hold to the it. right side wing to the uh, right for the Auburn Tigers going in motion is where here's and off going to the first back through the left half back and the stopping him is Kelvin Branch Branch got the ball carrier behind the line of scrimmage might have lost a yard on the play Kevin just closed that one off well hit him right there at the line of scrimmage and that's what you call textbook Textbook defense, Gil, when he puts him down like that. Tay Allen stopped for no gain on the play to the 20-yard line. I tell you what, we have not stopped him too many times for negative yardage. Break really? the huddle. Wide out to the right side is Travis Elston. Wing to the right. Out of second and ten situation for Spillers. Spillers this time drops back over on the right side. And look out. The pass is incomplete. Good defense that time on the far side. Dennis Dury. Dury. That ball was thrown low, so he really was going for the interception, and that, that was really a safe play. Well, that was a safe play because as the ball and the play develops in front of you, Dennis broke well on the football and actually had a chance to t catch one off but, the shoe tops. But again, third down and ten here. And also, if the guy had made the reception, he was He's down right there. there. Yes, so, uh, really, you had that was a good play on the part of Dennis Dury. He's not taking that much of a gamble where he's going to get burned because had the guy had the. Uh, uh, 
Elston made the reception on the far side. His knee would have been down. 6.49 to go on a third and 10 situation now. Let's send a man in motion this time inside draft. Ware tries to find running room to the outside. Gets across the 25, across the 30, 35, 40, 35. He's into the open territory. Do you have the angle on the 30-yard line? Pulling him down from behind. And that is Kenny McIntyre. McIntyre finally the only man between seven points for the Auburn Tigers. Pulls him down, where? Down inside the 25-yard line. Boy, what a foot race it was. Foot race it was, and you could see him as he took off across the field. Good angle. Did he have the speed to get there was the only question, and he did. Kendall Bracken, number 20, took the fake on the little hip move that Ware gave him, gave up his outside containment. He allowed him to get outside. Huge play for the Tigers from Auburn. Tyrone Ware is having a season here tonight. 6.22 to go on the clock, moving again. This time, handoff going to the first back through. That's Allen. Allen might have gotten a yard, if that. Well, they closed off well on the trap. Mm -hmm. That's the same play that he's been able to run the first time for the touchdown. Closed it again right off at the line of scrimmage. But after you hold them first and second down, you got to play third down as well. And the Dolphin door. Tigers didn't stand up to the test that last third down. More of the ball carrier gets it to the uh, line of scrimmage. That's it. Moore and Allen, the two running backs, wing to the right is Ware. It's time to hand off again. Going right up the middle off the left side. Boy, you talk about a second effort getting inside the 15-yard line. We're at 544 to go in the third period. Official timeout. We're tied up at 21 apiece. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Four to go in regulation play of the third period. We've got a 21-21 ball game on a, a third down situation. Third and five for the Auburn Tigers inside the Dolphin 20-yard line. Double wideouts out to the left side, to the right side. A single wideout. Split backs. Flag on the play. Someone line up in the neutral zone. I'm not sure if we had some movement on the hard count yep, right there. Dolphin. Touchdown they had. We gave them an extra shot at it in a fourth down situation, held them. But we got called for the face mask. They got another fourth down situation. All of a sudden, they're into the end zone and uh, going up on the Dolphin 9 Tigers. So that's good enough for a first down. And they've got it outside the Dolphin 10 yard line at about the 12 and a half yard line. Spillers taking the time to talk to head first year head coach Dwight Jones over on the far side. Brings the play in. Got number 80 coming over to the right side. That's the uh, Trey Story. Story, the lone set back, lone wide out, handoff going to Ware, Ware up the middle, he gets uh, short of the 10 yard line, he got a couple of yards on the play, let's make it second down, and about eight to the Dolphin 10 yard line. Ramon Johnson, number 55. Right side is Story. Double wide outs to the left on a second and eight situation. Here's handoff again, inside trap going to Ware, Ware finds running room all the way down to the five yard line, he'll be stopped short just inside the five yard line. That's gonna bring up a third down and short yarded situation. Again, little inside trap, Ware, very strong runner for the door, for the Auburn Tigers. Griggs and Tyler Black bringing him down, third down now, and still a little bit more than two yards for the first. You see James Gardner coming in for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. So this time a little playing bit more on the defensive weight. side of the ball on the line of scrimmage. Goal line defense. Giselle Thomas also coming in for the Dolphin High Tigers. 422 in the clock will be third and about two for the Auburn Tigers. Just outside the five yard line. Handoff going to the second man through. And, and the ball's loose. The ball is loose again for the Auburn Tigers. Let's see who comes up with it. And it is popped loose and uh, Auburn comes up with it. The ball carrier that time was uh, Lukeman Moore. Moore had the ball knocked loose. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's gonna be very close to a first down. It's the ball on a fourth down situation. Fourth and the less than the length of the ball for a first down inside around the two yard line, two and a half yard line for Spillers. Look for Spillers on the quarterback keeper. He does on the keeper. He'll get the first down. Looks like he might have gotten the first down. His forward momentum got him just enough yardage. He ran right behind Kit Slayton. Slayton, 5'8, 185 pound center. And depending on where they they really went, we, they popped it up a couple of times when we recovered one of them. First and goal from the two-yard line for Spillers. Spillers hands off to Ware. Ware tries to find running room on the outside. He finds the end zone. 3-23, 28-21 Auburn. And it looked like he ran right through the grass. Was that Jarvis Dean or Kevin Branch? No, that Kevin Branch had him on around four, maybe five-yard line, but he didn't get it locked up. 
Ware takes it into the end zone, and now Auburn 27 21 at 323. Now, this is the type that the, uh, the some of the fans like, but I'll tell you what, it's hard on the coaches when you're running up and down the field like this, and Indian defense being able to hold. Russell will attempt the point after. There's a point after attempt, and it is good. It goes through the uprights. 3.23 to go here in the third period. We have got a 28-21 ball game. We've slowed them down once for sure, but then the penalty gives them another crack at it, and taking advantage of it is what a good football team will do. And kicking off here at 3.23, Dalton has to get the field position established and work it on down. Let's see if Russell tries to keep away from Brack as he did last time, gave it to Mathis, and Mathis got a pretty good run back to the Dalton 35-yard line. Russell, a left-footed kicker this time, he puts it in over Andy, he's trying to get it away. Mathis will field it just inside the 28-18-yard line, he dropped, he fumbles the ball, tries to pick it up and keep running with it, he gets across the 35, across the 40, down to the 40-yard line, 41-yard line, boy, almost very costly at about the 28-yard line, took his eye off the ball, look at where the defenders were, and uh, fortunately was able to pick it up and run with it, got outside the 40 to the 41 yard line so what uh, started out as a broken play turned out to be pretty good field position for the Dolphin High Tigers outside their own 40 yard line. And it could have been Auburn Tigers position on the 28. Mathis just not putting it away but when he got in into his hands picked it up turned something bad into something good. First and 10 Dolphin. That's the quarterback over center Dean Hart outside the 40 yard line. First and 10 sending uh, Mathis uh, Fulmer in motion. Here's hand off to Rab. Rab on a quick opener off the right side. Goes across the 50 into, Do into uh, Auburn territory inside the 45 down to the 43 yard line. A big pickup that time of let's see 10. We've got 15 about 17 18 yards on the on the run by Tim Rab. Just again the counter play again. Faking right coming back left. Huge hole. Rab sees it. Rab knows what to do with it now and again as his confidence continues to build nothing better than those long touchdown run deal for the running for about 120 yards on the night thus far first from 10 full of the Dolphin Night Tigers inside the Auburn 45 yard line Hello. This is the blocking back, the fullback handoff again to Rab. Rab this time the right side, inside the 40, down to the 35. He turns the corner. He's pushed out of bounds at the 31-yard line. And a good for another first down, a 12-yard run by the senior running back, Tim Rab. Rab well over 130 yards on tonight's ball game. And again, you run it to the left, turn around, swap the flip flop the formation, run it to the right, keep running until they stop it. At the 31-yard line, first and 10 for the Dolphin Line Tigers. Back-to-back -back plays, back-to-back -back first downs. Let's send. Jason Wright far out to the left side with the Larry Brackens. Out of the eye formation to Odom is the fullback. The tailback is Rab. The quarterback is Nance. Hands off to Rab. Rab this time off the left side. He gets inside 30. Got just a couple of yards on the play. Pulled down from behind after about a two-yard pickup. Quentin Scott that time, but it looked like he ran in the back to uh, ran in the back of the offensive lineman. Let me pick up. Thomas, I think. And if it wasn't him, it was Kirkland. And again, bounce to the ground, short gain on the play. But again, if he keeps his head up and finds a hole, he can turn it left or right and pick up a little bit more. Gain of a yard on the play, second and nine, right at the 30-yard line. Hash mark to the near side, the right side for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. 208, left in the third period, 28-21 ball game. This time, Nance going in the air. The pass is complete inside the 25-yard uh, line, down to the 20-yard line. And again, a good reception that time for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Adrian Fulmer makes the pickup, and that time, just a little slant-in pattern. Good enough for a first down. They're moving the ball steadily. No big plays right here. Get inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Good reception that time by Fulmer. And not only that, Gil, just a good tough run there at the end because he took a couple of pretty tough shots there from the back but still had enough power going forward to be able to push it to the first down strike. Okay, we got an equipment adjustment here by Fulmer. Fulmer had something come off his helmet. Quickly told the official. So we got an official timeout. Equipment adjustment. We've got uh, first and 10 for the Dolphin High Tigers at their, the 19 yard line of the Auburn Tigers. Let's see where he's, where he's lined up. No, they've got double wideouts left and right. Old setback is Rab on a keeper play. Look out, running, they're going to Nope, they're going to get it inside the 15-yard line, all the way down to the 10-yard line. That time, it looked like Nance and Rab were, uh, there's a flag on the uh, near side here. And I'm not sure who it is against. It might be holding against Auburn. Brackens was over here, and I'll tell you what, if I had if I had to defend Brackens, I might try and get away with a hold or two. Tie him down a little bit, <laughs> at least tie one leg up. But again, that's just a down-the-line option that time. Nance seeing the daylight keeps it. Yeah, holding the call against the Auburn Tigers. Holding the clock with 104 to go in the third period. Mathis to the near side. 
The hash mark to the left side, the far side is where the ball will be lined up. Nance will run out of the shotgun. Lining up to his right side is Rab. Here's the snap, there's a handoff going to Larry Brackens. Brackens beats him in the corner, he's into the end zone. Touchdown to the Open Eye Tigers from five yards up. And just a little reverse coming out from right to left, sending the man in motion. Larry Brackens, foot race over to the corner. It was really no race. Not much of a race at all, Gil. He took a shot going into the end zone, but after he crosses there, the hands go up. And it, with 54 seconds left, the Dothan Tigers, 27-28, need the point right here big time. I tell you what, we have matched a point for point thus far. There is the snap, there is the kick, and it is no good, no good. And now we've got the flag down over here. Got a flag down. Might get another shot at it, let's see. Both teams coming back out as the officials talk it over. And Dothan might, nope, Dothan's not gonna get another shot at it. Looks like it's against all, against the Dothan Eye Tigers. 28-27. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Non conduct against. Well, they signaled that it was against the But it looks like it's going to be a dead ball situation. So it was after? After the ball went through and the play was whistled dead. That does mean now that you kick off from their 45-yard line. Move it back. Move it back. And they'll kick it off from the 45-yard line. Twenty-seven ball game. Boy, what a big point after. Well, they're always right on a game like this. Mm -hmm. Somebody usually winds up chinking one of those one way or the other. Unfortunately for B.J. Hall, it went wide to the right. Usually you see the right-footed kicker push it or pull it, hook it. How was the placement of the ball, did you see? It looked all right to me, but they've had some problems. Uh, I don't think Addison's doing the snap and Jeremy Woodham and Jury's still doing the holding. But they had some problems on the first one. He's able to get down. Looked like he might have, uh, everything was okay on that one, but again, pushed it out wide right. B.J. Hall will be kicking off from the Auburn 45-yard line. Goes for trailing by a point, 28-27, 54 seconds to go here in the uh, third period. This one is a scrub kick. It's inside the 20-yard line, getting across the 20 to the 25 to the 30 to the 33-yard uh, line. And it'll be down by the Auburn Tigers, and they'll have a first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. So not in too bad a shape offensively. Not often. As far as fourth and out type situation. Handoff going to Elston. Elston gets it, or Moore. Moore gets running room. He gets it across the 40, picks his way to the 42-yard line. A good, about seven-yard pickup by Luke and Moore. And again, when you have those long games on first down, just makes that playbook open up. Everything that you got, you can use. Second and two situation there. Might get one more play. We're under 30 seconds to go in the third period. Single wide out. That is Elston coming out here to the left side. Double wing formation going in motion is rare. And off the call is given to Moore, I believe, and Moore gets it to Dothan territory on the, well, it's given to uh, Moore. Yeah, Moore gets the call, and he's on the Dothan side of midfield, or right at midfield, so it'll be a first down. First down for the Auburn Tigers. And that should do it here for the third quarter. Okay, there's the end of the third quarter. The scoreboard reads, Auburn 28, Dothan 27. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. Dothan Nine Tigers defensive unit going back out on the field for the final 12 minutes of regulation play here. 28-27, Auburn leading the Dothan Nine Tigers going into the uh, final 12 minutes. Stands in regulation. They've got the ball right at midfield. First and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. They now move from left to right across the down. Gil Anthony along with Mike Hutto. Here's Andoff again. This time going to Ware. Ware picks his way off the right side. Gets into Dothan territory just inside the 47 yard line. Just a straight power play. Not in no big hurry. Using up the clock if they can, keeping the ball on the ground with Ware and Moore out of that wing T offense and Tiger defense from Dothan's got to come up with a big play here. And as we say, they have not been hunting very much tonight. They've been going on fourth down situations, so you pick up three every time. 
it doesn't take you much. You get 12 on four down situation. Uh, second and seven situation this time. Here's a pitch out the left side for Ware. Ware inside the 35, inside the 30. It looks like he's going to make it into the end zone. Touchdown is Ware. He gets a 47-yard touchdown run. 47-yard touchdown run by Ware. No flags on the play. Just a quick pitch out of the unbalanced line. They've been running the trap. They ran the quick pitch out of that a couple of times. Ware saw it, that they were able to contain him. He cut it up, found the daylight gill, and took it on in, untouched into the end zone. Huge play because that puts him up 34 to 27. 34 27. The Auburn Tigers now lead by seven. It's the defense unable to hold more, like we say. Moore has, or Ware has had himself a season tonight. This goes through the uprights at the 11-19 mark. We've got a 35-27 seesaw there here. And the Dolphin Eye Tigers now trail by eight points. And again, that defense, hey, they will spend a little time, but that's not the kind of uh, short trips you wanted for the defensive unit. Again, the big plays coming up and we're doing the job tonight. Lot for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. They'll face a left-footed kick of Alex Russell. Kick away from it. We've had pretty good kickoff returns done by Mathis and Brackens. This one is going to be in the direction of Larry Brackens. Brackens takes it at the 10, at the 15, the 20 on the far side, the 25 at the 30. He is pulled down at the 31 yard line. And pulling him down is uh, Sean Bailey. Bailey pulls uh, Larry Brackens down, first and 10 for the Dolphin Nine Tigers from the 30 yard line. And again, pretty good field position outside the 30 yard line, first and 10. Nance again leading the Tigers from quarterback position. Cannot fall down right here. It's they score, we got to score. Odom is the fullback. Rab is the tailback. First and ten from the 30. This is the handoff going to Rab. Rab will find running room. He gets to the line of scrimmage. He picks his way to about the 33-yard line where he is pulled down by a gang of Auburn Tigers. They reacted well. That time they got some penetration. The counterplay just not there for Rab. Short gain on the play. Second down and still nine. Okay, Nance, go, Nance goes to the sideline quickly. Larry Bracken's coming back into the ball game. Going to the sidelines is Patrick Reeves. Okay, Jason Wright along with Adrian Palmer to our side, to the near side, the left side as the offense looks at it. Brackens one on one on the far side. Here's a pitch out going to Rab. Rab tries to find running room. He's going to turn the corner at the 35, picks his way to the 40, to the 45. He's close to midfield at the 48 yard line. Boy, you talk about a nice pick and run there. He was picking his holes and following his blockers nicely, cutting to the left, cutting to the right. He cut all the way up to the 48-yard line. Good run by Tim Brad. Good, good job in the, helping out here, the wide receivers. You love to see them block because if they're not blocking on that play, don't get at least eight of those yards, it looks like, because he had a shot at him at about the 40. The block of the wide receiver allows him to pitch, push the ball up close to that 50-yard line. I tell you, Joe, Joe Neal is in there for James Garden doing a pretty good job for the Dolphin High Tigers on a first and 10 from the 48-yard line. Hold him the blocking back, gives it to Rab. Rab into Auburn territory at the 40 yard line, the 35. He's pulling 30 yard line, still on his feet, down around the 27 yard line. Tim Rab, boy, nice run all the way inside the Auburn 30 yard line at the 26 yard line. And we talked about some of those stutter steps. That time he dragged number four there for the Auburn Tigers on down the field. Wilson, DB up there, not one of the biggest ones, but again, the confidence you can just see him as he grows. Tim Rapp doing a fine job subbing for an injured Barry Elliott. Elliott coming into this game with in excess of 300 yards in the first two games. And I'll tell you what, Tim Rapp getting up and closing in on about 150, 160 yards. The uh, Auburn Tigers call timeout now at the 940 mark of the uh, regulation play. Was it Dothan calling timeout? No, they, they first signaled that it was yeah. a Dothan timeout, but then they changed it back around to Auburn Tigers. And, uh, if you've ever had a seesaw battle again, we've had this before, and I mean, when you think about it, the coach is down there about to pull out the last two or three hairs on the head. Man, I tell you, it's just one of those exciting matches, and it's one of those who would have thunk at games when he gets right down to it. 
with the way the teams have played, especially that Dolphin Tiger defense. That Dolphin Tiger defense has played relentless in the first two games. And of course, the Auburn Tigers showed that they, they had the ability to score. They have scored, uh, they lost their game last week, 21 to 20. So they had a close one there, but they put up 42 points. So they have put up 62 points in their first two games. They put up 31 points on the average. And they not hurt it tonight, yet. Yeah, but they, they, they didn't hurt their average tonight. They've got 35 up, up on the board thus far. As they come out back out on the field, the Dolphin 9 Tigers, you got A.K. Deanhart along with Giselle Thomas. I see number uh, 72, also James Gardner back in there. Uh, Kevin Brown on a first and 10 for the Dolphin 9 Tigers from the Auburn 27 and a half yard line. Rab is in motion, handoff going to Odom. Odom on his first carry of the night gets it inside the uh, third 25 yard line to about the 24 and a half yard line. Well, that's just one of those plays there. I <coughs> don't know whether he stumbled a little bit going in the line, but you've got to run that fullback just to keep them honest, short gain on the play, but then again, it's going to keep those linebackers there where they can't just fly out of there. Second and eight situation, a gain of two for Odom. The ball at the 25-yard line, 9.40. There we go, the clock is moving now. The clock didn't move the last play at all. Double wideouts to the far side. Larry Franklin's over here on the left. Here's a pitch out going to Rab. Rab tries to turn the corner. He's going to turn it. Nope, barely gets a turn. He's pulled down from behind. I tell you what, he had to have another half a step. Pulled down from behind by his shoelace. And that's going to bring up a third down situation. Number 42, Brian Young is the man just barely with the shoelaces. And again, if he can get that other step, and get it put up, get turned up, he's going to push first down yardage. Okay, we've got to get some uh, yardage right here, and I'll tell you what, we're not necessarily, hey, we can, we can settle for a field goal. We can There's kick it a field goal. We have the time, and again, that puts it down. You're uh, one touchdown in the two-point conversion or two scores. It's double wide outs to the wide side, the near side of the field for the Dolphin 9 Tigers on the third and seven situation. 8.51, the clock moving. Dropping back is Nance. Nance is rolling to his left. He's got running room over He's here. Got him He's going to lay it out there. He's got Larry Brackett. Touchdown, Touchdown Dolphin. Touchdown, Dolphin. Nance had some running room over here on the left. That gave him, that bought him just enough time to see Larry Brackens, Brackens behind his defenders. And when you got a six foot five guy, hey, he just jumped up for it and he got it and pulled it up into the end zone. The Dolphin Eye Tigers now find themselves down by two, 35, 33. Just a huge play, Nance had his head up as he was running. He did see that he had the daylight there, but again, pass formation, you see your big man deep. He got the ball up in the air. And of course at six five, Dolphins call timeout, setting up the two point conversion here. 8.43 to go in regulation play and a big two-point conversion attempt for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Again, if you fail right here, you still got plenty of time. And you're still just the you field can, goal You're back. just a field goal away from a win, not even tying it, but and you're the, a field goal from winning it. So, you've got to try to knock the score here. You've got to try and tie it up right here. Number 68, Joe Neal coming into the ball game for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. He'll line up on the left side of center, along with James Gardner. The lone setback is Rab Brackens going in motion. Brackens is looking for a little bit of hole, and he is into the end zone. Oh, we got a flag on the play right here on the near side. It's either motion up, oh, it's going to be against. The Dolphin Eye Tigers are indicating it is against Auburn. Offside against Auburn. And that's one of those plays that is dead at the snap. And yeah. if you had a choice, you would go ahead and take the run because Larry takes it into the end zone. That does make it a yard and a half close to somebody in the neutral zone. Okay, but of course we would like to have that too and gone. You know, kick it off right here. That's right, kick it off and tie it up a few pieces. Let's see the way they line up again, see if they line up the same way. We're a yard and a half closer now. Okay, but now this time Bracken's lined up on the right side. Odom on the left side. Now he goes from right to left. This time they're going to work it around the right side. Let's see if he can make it in the end zone. He does. He does. And the two-point conversion is good by Dolphin. We're tied up at 35 apiece. Giselle Thomas, number 54, leading the way. But again, Larry Brackens, we've talked about him being physical and big. And at 6'5", all he's got to do is stretch. Huge play right there. 35-35. 
one fine football game tonight. I feel it's a lot finer when we're tied up. Well, right? again, you know, uh, the, 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 some I believe I heard somebody say the only time they don't like listening to us when we can't bring out a win. I mean, if we could win every time, folks, you know we would. But again, when you look at something like this, you know, you'd like to see those close football games, but it has been one fine battle up and down the field tonight. 843 left in regulation. It's been a long one. The Oakland Tigers and the Auburn Tigers going up and down the field here. 35-35. Been a long time since I've seen the high school football teams or both teams combined for 70 points with still over eight well, minutes left in the fourth quarter. We're going to have more than 70 points well, because we're not going to the house at the time. Somebody's going to have to win it with at least three more. Well, let's hope the Don't Blind Tigers are on that end of it. Okay, the defensive unit has got to come up with it now. Okay, the uh, the offense, I tell you what, you got to admire the offense has answered the call every time tonight. And if it had not been, we would be several points behind. It would be close. The Oakland Eye Tigers now will be kicking off. There's no wind to see a flag flying at half staff. Is a line still right now? Jason Wright will be kicking off for the Oakland Eye Tigers. Or excuse me, yeah, oh. BJ Hall kicks off. Hit it solid last time. He needs another big one. There's no wind to kick in. Hit it into the end zone as last time. This one is going to be end over end over end. It's going to be fielded by Moore. Moore gets to the 10-yard line, looking for running room on the far side. Gets across the 20, across the 25, across the 30, down to the 32. And he is pushed out of bounds at the outside. Well, they're going to mark it at the 20. And Kevin Briggs, they've got to take control, as does the front line on a first and 10. Four spillers. There's a man in motion. Gets off the first man through off the left side of there. That's Allen. Allen maybe gotten a yard or something out to the right side, the wide side of the field. Wing team formation. That's Allen. Is the wing back handoff. This time, taking it. Spiller is looking for running room on the 30-yard line. He slides down at the 35-yard line. Is where they'll mark it. They'll mark a third down situation. Third and about four. Spiller's over there on the far side. Slid down. I'll tell you what. He might have slid a little bit too hard. That well, time. he hit real mm -hmm. hard on the knees there, but he looked like he was able to bounce up all right. Right now, third down. Huge third down play. The whistle's been blown at 38 seconds. And, uh, and it could be still, that he is taking a little bit extra time because he was shaking up slightly. Spiller's talking to Dwight Jones, the first year head coach of the Auburn Tigers. He's one and one. They've got that third down situation. They've got 10 third seconds and left three. to snap it from him. That's 20. 20 to go. Here's handoff again, going to the first back through, getting very close to the first down. They're going to be short of the first down, so we have a bad angle on it. <laughs> now, this one's one is not yeah. quite as severe no. as other one, but again, you get to see where after running the football all night, he just lowered his head and got everything he could possibly get out of the play, pushed a couple of those black shirts back out of there to make it this fourth down and less than one. Jarvis Steven coming into the ball game, replacing Doug Turner, or excuse me, replacing uh, Josh Kirkman. Jarvis Steven in the ball game, fourth and less than one situation. They have tried to spread out the open uh, defense. They got another wide house to the far side. Spillers, let's see if he does. He goes over. I don't know. He's going to be stopped. He's going to be stopped. He did not have he any did not forward move progress very that much at he all. Did not, he did not get off the ball very quick. You can see that right there. That was very slow in developing. He did not jump off the ball very good. I don't know if he just didn't have control of it, but uh, there was it was not a good snap. Right from the get-go, you could see he did not have any momentum. In fact, he might have lost on that play. Again, good push up mm -hmm. front, and what you have to do as a defensive lineman, and the Auburn people are very much worried about this. This will probably want to be one of the few. Yeah, no, he it didn't is make not it. He didn't make it. The Tigers defense holds for the first time tonight. One of the few times tonight they came up big when they had to. And it's huge, oh, Bill, because great. it's th first and 10 on the 38. And again, Auburn really in a situation, nothing much to lose, going for it. Hadn't been stopped all night when the Tiger defense had to have it there. Good penetration. Uh, Again, Ramon Johnson on this side. Gabe Davis had been the tackle on the far side. Didn't see the number, but they got the good push. The linebackers came off and didn't let him go forward. That's the quarterback, first and 10 from the Auburn 38-yard line. Put the goal for the line Tigers. Hand off to Rab. Rab looking for running room. He gets inside the 35, the 30. He's down to the 25-yard line, upended at the 24-yard line. Good run by Tim Rab all the way inside the Auburn 25-yard line, down to the 23-yard line. And if it hadn't been for Marion Welch, he goes into the end zone again. Just to, again, the counter play bumped again off John. 
Josh Kirkland Gill as he got upfield, but that time he didn't go down. Big play for the Dothan Tiger offense. 6-17 to go in regulation play. The Dothan High Tigers on the move inside the 25-yard line of the Auburn Tigers. Another fresh set of downs for the Di Tigers. And, of course, Dothan trying to utilize a little bit of the clock. Nance looking at the sidelines. Now he'll take the snap as he goes under center. Hand off again. Going to Rab. Rab tries to spin around the tackle. He does get away from one tackle. However, he has slowed down and brought to his seconds for station identification. Second and eight situation, handoff again, going to Rab. Rab trying to work inside the left side, spins away from one tackler, gets inside the 20, down just inside the 20 yard line. Us here to bring up a third down situation, third and about six. And I'll tell you what, right now they're trying to use a little bit of that time. If we put three on the board, it would be nice to get one first down right here. It would be huge to get one first down, and then again, you're looking at the situation. A couple of first downs put you there close to the goal line. Dothan in no big hurry, but again, with third down and still six yards. This is large right here. Third and six situation for the Dolphin Eye Tigers just inside. The ball just inside the Auburn 20 yard line. Bracken's over to the right side. He's spotted inside of Jason Wright. Out of the shotgun formation looking for Larry. The pass is complete. Touchdown Dolphin! Jason Wright. To Jason Wright. Jason Wright gets it from 20 yards out. 20 yard touchdown pass. And I'll tell you what, it was a beautifully thrown ball. Well, again, Brackens comes on the quick post. Looked like Nance gave him a little fake when the Tigers from Auburn secondary bit on the fake. Wright kept his pattern in motion. I believe that's Jason's first catch. What a way to break in the season oh, with a big touchdown. Beautiful, beautiful. Well thrown ball by Brent Nance. And of course, we're going to try the point after attempt. 41 35 now. There's the snap. There's the kick. And it is through the uprights. We've gone from down by seven, down by eight, up by seven. The Dolphin High Tigers take them for one of the few times tonight they held Auburn. And uh, I'll tell you, it paid off for them. That makes the defense feel like they have really done the job. And again, it shortened the field. Some 60-something yards makes it that much easier for your offense, taking advantage of it. And that is big to go up here this late in the game. B.J. Hall will kick off. And, of course, you got the, uh, the man who has had a, a year, a season, back there to receive, Tyrone Ware. Let's see who they kick it to. They'll kick it on the far side to Moore. Hey, Moore and Ware, it's the same thing as flag and throwing as the ball goes out of bounds. That'll put it first and 10 on the 40. On the 40 yard line, first and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. The defensive unit now comes out. Or is it 35? 35. Yeah, from the 35, first and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. 4.52 to go. Now it is the 40. Is it 40? Oh, they're going to make them kick it again, it looks like. Yeah, they want to run back. They feel they can get probably better field position. They're going to move it back against the Golden Eye and Tigers. It is a choice that they have. They can take it where now, it went out of bounds. Okay, now where would they have taken it? Where would they have had the uh, they, 35 they, or 40? Somewhere in. I just want to see if it's going to pay off. You're looking at a situa situation that would have been, I believe, first and 10 on the 30, on the yeah. 40. Okay, we're going to kick off from those the 35 two, right? now. But now they have to kick off from the 35-yard line. They feel they can get a better kickoff or a return here of some kind. But then again, you're looking at the situation. 35 is hard to beat. See what the uh, Dolphin Kicking Unit, the special team, does right here. 4.52 to go in regulation play. 30, 42, 35. Dolphin up by a touchdown. Big two-point conversion by Larry Brackens, tied it up at 35-35. Big 20-yard touchdown pass reception for Jason Wright. They've all been big tonight. Okay, he the ball and over and going to field it, and it goes out of bounds again. What happens there? Keep going back? It depends, again, on what they decide to do. They're making yeah, the they coaches are motioning. Now it'll be 
and the ball goes out of bounds. He's got it marked at 29 that time. And now from the 30-yard line. I've never seen this back-to-back -back like this. They're going to walk it back to the 30-yard line. They're trying to keep it away from the very potential, potentially dangerous receivers in more and where. What have you got to lose? Let's, let's go with an onside Five kick. Yards at a time. <laughs> Let's go with an onside kick, recover the ball, take it over. <laughs> you talk about the element of surprise. It would definitely surprise everybody. <laughs> that might surprise him just enough to put him over the edge after all of what you go through on the emotional roller coaster one like this. Okay, they've got more and wear down around the 20 yard line. Getting ready to approach the ball is B.J. Hall. Hall approaches the ball. This one, well, it'll tell you a little squib kick down here, and they're going to not let him run it back. They're going to get it down around the 35-yard uh, line. So that's right where they would have had it. We've done this. <laughs> they gained a yard. They got it to the 36. And if you say they were supposed to take it at the 40, they lost four. Yep. They gained one. <laughs> Oh, well, you look like a genius sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you feel like a nut. That's that right. <laughs> sometimes you feel like the dog, other times you feel like the hydrant. First and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. They've got it just outside their own 35-yard line, 448, the clock moving. Handoff going to the first man through. And that, of course, is where. And for the, one of the few times we have stopped him after about a one- or two-yard pickup, that'll bring up second down. More importantly, that clock's going to continue to move. Well, the first man in on the hit, Dave Davis, had him. He was able to wiggle free. Of course, that's not the first one that Ware's made catch tonight, Gil. But, again, those are the time the defense reacted to the short gap. A 424 the clock moving. I think we started about 32. Is where they uh, put the ball in play. I mean, Auburn's already in four down territory from what we've seen tonight, so you just got to play it tough. At the 37 yard line, Spiller's the quarterback. Handoff this time, taking the handoff. He is got dropping back player. on a screen play. Oh, they're, oh, they're going to be a flag on it. Flag on it. That's, that's behind the line of scrimmage. There's no flag. No flag behind the line of scrimmage. Is that right? I don't think they can get them behind the line of scrimmage. They're talking it over there, apparently. And having a conference over there on the far side with the officials. 357 mark. Who was that that had got the, who had the hammer? <laughs> That screenplay, they had it read beautifully that they, time. We had the defense there for the play. And as they talk it over, he's going to have to pick up the flag. It's just going to go. That's an incomplete pass. It's not yep. mm. That's by rule. Now, that's nothing that they're making up. They can't, they can't get them on that. Incomplete pass. It's incomplete pass. Third down. I might not be sure about the 35 <laughs> 40, but you're sure about that one. Third down and nine situation. Again, we're at the Auburn Tigers now are still in four down territory here. 357 to go in regulation. They had that screen set up, but Dolphin, for one of the few times tonight, the defense had it read beautifully. Out of third and nine situation, Spiller's dropping back. He is looking, looking to his left. The pass is like going to be complete yes, at yes. midfield. Complete at midfield. Nice reception by Levitt. Levitt, his first reception of the night, right at midfield, down on his knees. And he took it. I mean, he took it. If we had long grass. Well, again, <laughs> Levitt, if he doesn't come <laughs> yeah, back a couple right. of steps for the football like the coach is teaching to come get that football, it's going to take the short hop in there. And as a result, they've got four and ten instead of first and ten. Story over here to the near side, the right side of the field. First and ten, right at midfield. Hash mark to the far side. Oh, my boy, doing a good job. Tyler Black. One of the first men to greet him, along with number 35, Gabe Davis, in there for the Dolphin High Tigers. You know, we were worried 
think it were. It was going to run out of gas, but I tell you what, Gil, still with 321 and counting. He was fighting that time just to maintain possession of football because the offensive line just basically let him through. They got him deep. Second down and 12. Second and 12, a loss of two by Ware. Double wing formation. Sending again Ware in motion. Oh, this time halfback option. Ware, look out. No! Oh, overthrows his man. He had him. He had Levitt out there in the open on a halfback uh, play. Handing off to the halfback, and the halfback, Ware, found Levitt out there. Just a little too much of a lead. Either that or Levitt ran out of gas. Well, Levitt's doing everything he can. Mm -hmm. He's outstretched. He might have came across his fingertips. That's how close it was, ladies and gentlemen. But again, fortunate for the Dothan Tigers, still third and 12 right here. And right. we've seen him run the quick pitch with success to the short side formation out of the unbalanced line. But this is not that formation. Hey, Allen over here on the right side going in motion. Now again, they're going to try it again. Back to the uh, lateral. Pick it up. Pick it up. Here we go. Yes. It's Dothan's ball. Dothan recovers it that time. Spillers, I don't know where Spillers, but Spillers had his back totally turned to the play. What it was was a uh, handoff, again, going to where where was going to toss it back to the quarterback, but Spillers evidently was not on the right, uh, right page because that time Spillers had his back turned and he was running away from the ball, sort of running upfield, and Ware threw it to him. Dothan recovers the ball inside the Auburn 38. Eight yard line. That's a huge turn of events with 250. Auburn still does have two timeouts to kill the clock. But again, Dothan's pulled the stopwatch out last series. They won't be in a big hurry here. Okay, the head off to Rab. Rab puts his head down. He gains about three on the play at the 35 yard line. 244. Boy, what a big play that was. Again, Who fell on the ball for Dothan? I couldn't see? see the defensive end over there on that side. It looked like a defensive end linebacker. But a big time. Black shirt right there, and Rab taking the ball running. That time he pushed those black shirts back after the hit. Yeah, that was a, a gain of three on Rab's part. We've got 222, triple twos in the clock moving. 42 35 the score. And again, the Dothan, now the Auburn Tigers are bringing all those people up close to the line. If they can break it, they'll go. Here's the pitch out. Look out. The ball falls loose. It's going to be Auburn. I Auburn, Rab picked Auburn it up. might have came up with it. Did Rab pick Rab, it up? I think well, Rab it. got it. But over there was a, a big lineman, number 75 for the Auburn Tigers, pounced on it. Ty Sheely. And Sheely almost came up with it. Rab picks it up at the 45 yard line. We dodged a bullet Ooh. on that one, Gil. Lost about bullet. seven or eight on the play. Seven. Oh, well, we're back to the 45 yard line. So that makes it. A, a second down or third down situation. Third, and we're talking about third and about 17 to go. Third and 17 for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Again, this time, hand off to Rab. Rab up the middle. Gets away from one tackler. He drops down. And uh, there is, he is down inside the 45 at the 43 yard line. And now the Auburn Tigers are going to burn one of their timeouts. Okay, Auburn calls timeouts with the with fourth down situation. Left. Yep. 126 to go here in the ball game. We'll be back after this 30 second timeout. Back here with 126 to go in regulation play. It's not over till it's over, an old Lawrence Peter Barrow would say. I'll tell you what. And we've got a fourth down situation, fourth and long for the Dothan Eye Tigers. The ball, the line of scrimmage is the uh, Auburn 43 yard line to punt tonight. Jason Wright. There's the snap. He, they're coming. He gets it in over it. Lost it high. Lost it high. And it's going to take a Dothan bounce. Well, it's going to take a neutral bounce. Bounce is dead at the 16-yard uh, line. So, looks like you got 84 yards of real estate to cover in 74 seconds. Jason did a good job getting that knock. Mm -hmm. Got it up in the air. And it looked dope. Uh, the Tigers from Auburn sending the, the 10 players for the block. And again, when you do that, he got to get it off. He did. They're pinned back deep. The defense has still a minute 14 to go. The distance not important there. The fact that he got he it got up it there away. and got the defense 
down there to cover on the ball because they were down there before yes. the ball got down. First and ten for Spillers and the Auburn Tigers outside their own 15-yard line. 1.14 to go in regulation play. Dothan leading by seven, 42-35. Oh, knocked away. Oh, oh, oh. pass intended for number 14, Aaron Smith. And I'll tell you what, Jonathan Mathis, he, you could see it from here. We have the right angle. One of the few times we have an angle like that. But I'll tell you what, Jonathan Mathis, beautiful read on that. He's into the end zone. But again, if he can get his hands on it, but what they set up often on that play is the quick out and then fake and then go burn you deep. You got to watch out. Not, don't worry about those too many short ones underneath. Second and 10 situation, 109 were left in regulation. Spillers this time drops back. Oh, he's being hurried out of the pocket. He's going to be down on the far side. And, and the good. ball, I think, came out too. Yeah, when good. Good coverage by the Dothan High Tigers over there. The double nickel, 55, Ramon Johnson is who is putting the heat on Spillers from the backside. And Brad Addison, I think number 53, also in there on the hit. And Auburn's going to take their last timeout. With 53 seconds to go in regulation. Drops them back. They lost on that play. They lost about eight yards on the play. So that's going to bring up a third and 18 situation when play resumes. And again, a lot better rush. Ramon Johnson and Brad mm -hmm. Addison doing the job right there. And that time when they got to him, he's, Spillers has been able to get loose until then. The old big sack right there. And of course, hey, the uh, Dothan defense now is turning loose because they know that the, the Auburn Tigers have to got, and they have got to go for the big play. So the Dothan High Tigers are just getting off that defensive line. Well, you decide that's what you've got to do. Mm -hmm. But again, you don't want them to run that draw past you right here. With the third and 18, regardless of what happens on the play, you're looking at them trying to get something somewhere around half the distance, and if they break it, fine. If they don't, they're still going to go for it fourth down because that one score, you know, you, we've seen so many strange things happen through the years. Jarvis Dean in for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. Kelvin Branch lines up on the far side, on the uh, right side of the defensive end. On a third down situation, this time on a draw play, looking for a little bit of running room is Alston. Or Moore, rather. Moore got it across about the 12-yard line. Moore gets it to about the, it brings up a fourth down situation. Of course, they're going to go for it now. Uh, no huddle offense because the time They don't have enough them. men on nope. the line of scrimmage here. That's a yeah, Dropping back, dropping back. There's a flag on the play. Looking downfield. No, there's no receiver there. But and there's a flag on the play. They do not, did not have the required seven people on the line of scrimmage. So that's going to send it over to the Dolphin Tigers. That's one of those that's not automatic. You do have the choice, and without seven men on the line, they drop the flag at the snap. The legal procedure of the call. Yeah, and but that's the procedure is that seventh man wasn't lined up on the line. And Dolphin Tigers have the ball first and, be first and ten. Okay, both the nine Tigers take over first and ten with 24 seconds to go. You have to snap to it that one time. Now, what the heck? Let's go into uh, the end I'm zone. telling you what. <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment here. Who was that pro game that when they yeah, snapped you're it back right. there, yeah. they fumbled it, they and fumbled it, it was yeah. a losing touchdown Ooh. several years yes. back? And they were just going to run out the clock. And that goofy handed, ball just don't bounce it off. Right. Yep, you're right. Handed it off. 24.7 seconds showing on the clock. Tell you what, you got to take your hat off to Brett Nance. He has done a fine job coming in here. Okay, he takes the knee. And that's going to do it for the Dolphin Eye Tigers. They win their third straight of the year. And uh, hey, things they had to play catch up for a while. After it was playing catch up, it was playing seesaw. And there's the crowd. The Dolphin Eye Tiger fans are on their feet applauding the Dolphin Eye Tigers offensive and defensive unit. You talk about a team effort here. 42 35. The final score. We'll be back to wrap it up after this two minute timeout. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network.